Hi guys. The gifted sub was to stream elements, not to a rando, okay? I hate not seeing my emotes in chat. Hi Deacon, welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hello. Been a while, man, hello. <laughs> For real, when was the last time we chatted? January. Okay, that's not that's not too long. Dang, this music's scary. Hope you guys did your homework. You guys best have watched the VODs back. I'm not gonna... I don't... Okay, I barely remember what happened in this game. I have, like, a basic understanding. Wait, Stream Elements is now a two-year sub. That's crazy. Do we have any other two-year subs? Maybe Emmy? Wait, let me see. Yeah, Emmy's a two-year sub. Holy. Guys, face came out in two minutes. Hashtag real, hashtag not clickbait. Paranormal. Okay, I spelled the title right. I always get scared. It, well, let me do my Twitch Prime. Um, refresh. Or try desktop. Twitch Prime is always glitchy. I think they're they're genuinely trying to scam. It's because I'm on the phone? Told you! Try on desktop later. I sold my laptop? I'll give you one of mine, don't worry. <laughs> Omega low. Okay, I'm almost done posting. Type one if you're scared. This music isn't like scary, it's more like creepy. Cause it sounds like kids singing it. And whenever you see a kid in a horror movie, you know it's gonna be scary. No! Did- No way the camera broke. Grr. Let me fix this. Everybody hold your horses. I didn't even know a DC. It didn't make the Oop. face reveal. That that camera is. It's, I have a tape over my integrated what it can. Can you give me music? It's too loud. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. It is 11.10 a.m. Almost time for you guys to make a wish. Get ready. Today we're going to be continuing my playthrough of Paranormal Sight. Also, welcome and Deacon to the Just Starting Screen. Well, to the Just Starting Soon Screen. Thank you for chatting. Good morning. I am freshly out of the shower. I did errands this morning. And I also went out and got myself a little treat. I'm going to... This is a this is a cute story that I have. I don't... We're, we're pausing the music for this story. So... Go out to do errands day, right? And I gotta start a diet soon, so I was like, you know what? Today's gonna be my treat day. So I go to Crumble. And this week, I okay, just to preface, I only go to Crumble when they have a fruit flavor, because fruits are superior in desserts, I'll say it. Mainly because they make the actual fruit so sweet. So this week, they had strawberry cake. I go in, I get a strawberry one and a chocolate chip one for my sister, because, you know, gotta treat her, right? And you know how when you order and then they show you the cookie in the box, they're like, is this good? And I was like, yes, it is. And I was like, you know what? I'm a sucker for your guys' frosting. And she was like, do you want some extra? 
And I was like, yo, no way, that's crazy. So she goes in the back, she puts more frosting on. She comes back to the counter, box is closed, so I can't see it. And I was like, don't worry, I won't snitch. And she's like, I got you. And then we're chit-chatting, you know, I riz. Because at, at my local location, I always try to chat them up. I always tip decently. I didn't tip today because I was able to use $10 in store credit. So free cookies for me and my sister today. So I wouldn't, I didn't tip today. There was no way for me to tip because I had no transaction. Um, So, <laughs> and I was like goofing and gaffing. And I was like, you know, I got to start my diet soon. So this is kind of my, la my last day of having sweet. And she's like, oh my God, good for you. And I was like, thank you. And she's like, you know, I, I can't leak, but there might be some root flavors coming up. And I was like, no way. And she's like, you got to come back. It's like, you know what? I just won't tell my dog that I'm coming in. <laughs> you guys want to see it? So I didn't open it till I got on the bus because I was like, I'm going to have it be a little surprise. Dude, she put almost double frosting on here. It's crazy. You can see. She double decked that shit. Holy. It's crazy. And I, I tried a little nibble the frosting earlier. I'm going to be nibbling on this throat string because this is going to be my little snack. It's also like my weekly allotted amount of sugar because for my diet, I have to try and do it in Mediterranean. So I basically have to cut out sugar entirely. But I'm going to be nibbling on this today. And I tried a little bit of the frosting. The frosting is literally the best thing ever because you can see it has like actual strawberry pieces in it. It's so good. The cookie itself is made, but the icing, holy shit, so good. Shout out to that girl. Next time I go in, I'm going to tip a 20 if I see her. She was great. I mean, because she's always there when I go, because I always go in the morning. Because that's when the cookies are still nice and warm. Okay, that was my little story for today. It was chill. Also, I'm trying 120 frames per second today. It looks a bit smoother. Like a tad smoother. But we'll see how it goes. The only thing I don't like about um, having the camera in a higher frame rate is that it's darker. Like this right now is ISO 3200, 3200 ain't too high. But I like, you want to see how much color correction I use? Look, this is how dark the camera actually is. Without filter? With filter. See the difference is crazy. Um... If you want to make your camera brighter, just do increase brightness and then increase contrast. It does wonders. The only the only bad thing is that it makes me look kind of orange. But that's fine. Okay, enough stalling. We're 10 minutes in. I hope you guys made your wishes. Today, I'm going to be continuing my playthrough of Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Hondro. I played this back in October, and I did about like seven-ish hours of the game, and then I never finished it. Not because I'm scared. But it's just not many people watch live, and I hate doing story games live sometimes because you can't, like, jump in halfway through. You're gonna miss a lot of the lore. So, I just didn't finish it, and I looked it up, and this game is about 12 to 15 hours long. So, I'm about halfway through, and I forgot how much, like, I was invested in the actual story. So, today, we are gonna finish it. Okay, maybe not today. I only got five hours to stream because I'm doing stuff in the evening today. But, today, I'm gonna try my best to finish it. And I did skim back through the previous VOD, so I'm going to try do, to do the similar voices as I did last time. And if they're not, and if they're not fully similar, I'm sorry if your immersion is ruined. I'm not a professional VA, okay? Also, this looks so weird. Like, I'm a floating head. I'm wearing my, my hoodie. I got it from the men's section at Fred Meyer. Okay, I think last time we left off, we just finished, like, the detective POV and then some of the mother POV. And I think you get to play as the girl who- oh wait, what? Wait, okay, how do I skip this? Oh, return to title, okay, sorry. I- I- I loaded this save just to test audio, so... This is not where we left off.
Oh, wait. I went to the main menu, not the game screen menu. I gotta... I haven't played this in a few months. Story chart. There we go. Okay. So, what I remember is that we first played as Shogo. And he was on a date, and this girl was like, Man, I love ghosts. Let's find a ghost. And then they found a ghost, and then the ghost killed her. Or didn't kill her, it paralyzed her. And then the ghost possessed him, and then he has like these cursed little statues. And for the more statues you have, the stronger you get. And every curse gives you a different power. So that was Shogo POV. And then we did a little bit of Shigima, because her son went missing. And so her dialogue is basically just talking to this detective guy. And then we did Tetsuo Tsutsumi, who was a detective, and he has like this really flamboyant partner, police partner. And then they're going through the city trying to find the other curses as well. And then whenever, so you, you, you can only progress through the story when you do ever do, you can only progress through the story when you do certain people's POVs. So once you've exhausted someone's POV, you have to play somebody else. So right now, I've exhausted all of Shogo's, I've exhausted all of the mothers, and majority of the detectives. So in order to unlock this final section, I have to go back and play as the high school girl. Now this is the girl either who died, because I know some girl jumped out of the window. Trigger warning. So I think this POV is either the girl or her friend. So we haven't seen any of this girl's POV. So if we're jumping in today, this is all completely new, basically. We have yet to touch the, the girl's POV. So Yako Sakazaki, the spirit board. Wait, no, did they bring a Ouija board to school? That's so stupid. He's spirit board, Yako Sazuka, or Sak Yako Sakazaki. Yako Sakazaki searches for the right to resurrection, hoping to revive her friend who jumped to her death. To get the information she needs, she meets with her classmate Mio Kurosuzo in their classroom at midnight to attempt using a spirit board. Don't fuck with Ouija boards. We know this. If you see it on a sleepover, you leave. Even if it's not real, the 5% that it could be real, you don't mess with them, okay? That's your lesson for today. And why are you doing that at school? So many people die at school. Especially in America. Anyway. <laughs> Yako Sakazaki, 12 a.m. Everything starts at midnight. Komogata High School. Meal. That should be everything. Okay, let's start. Ready for this, Yako? Um, I need a second. I want to go. What what voice should I give her? I'll give her a normal voice. Um, sorry. Give me a second. It's okay. It's normal to be nervous your first time. There's nothing to be scared of, I promise. Thanks. I'm ready. High school student, Yako Sakazaki. I hate how I have to move my cursor. All right, let's start. It's not even a real board. This is the spirit board. This is how we'll be communicating. First, we both put a finger on the 10 yen coin that's on the board. Like this. Just like that. Relax your finger as much as you can. Now for the chant. Repeat what I say, okay? Oh, Spectre with a spirit board, please visit us. Your turn. Oh, I forgot. It, it was Spectre, because Spectre is like an onlooker. Spectre of the spirit board. What? 
Spectre of the Spirit Board. Oh, it's it's testing me. Because it's putting different spelling for board. Dude, I forgot already. It was please visit us, I think. Spectre of the Spirit Board. Spectre of the Spirit Board. Please visit us. Good. Please tell us if you are there. I'm not moving it. Whoa, it really moved. Looks like we succeeded in the summoning. We can ask questions now. Right, questions. Start with a question you know the answer to and see the response. Then, when you know your questions are being answered truthfully, you ask what you really want to know. Okay. I'll start with something simple. Something that the ghost should know would be what is this place? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, where are we? H I G H High School. H I G H S C H O O L. High school, that's right. The answers don't seem to be very precise. What is my name? I think it should know the answer to this. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, what is my name? Oh! Huh? What's the matter? How strange. Uh. <laughs> huh. It told me no. Ah. Ah. Okay, I forgot her voice. <laughs> ah. I bet it means it doesn't know. It may be the specter of the spirit board, but it doesn't know everything. Is this spirit really the big deal? Oh. It's fine. I feel like it's giving me an attitude. What is my name? I'll ask it again. What is my name? It didn't even hesitate this time. What is this girl's name? Fine. What is the name of the girl across from me? Why does it know her name? Mio. Mio. That's right. Ah, oh, that's not fair. It knows your name, Mio. It even used that weird character you used to spell your name. How flattering. Psychic girl. Why is she called the psychic? Mio Kuro Suzo. I bet. Even the teachers get it wrong all the time. I guess these paranormal beings just tend to take a liking to you. Huh. I don't know how- Huh. I don't know how I should feel about that. Is it really you? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Are you truly the Spectre of the Spirit Board? Huh? It said no. Is it lying? Not quite. The Spectre of the Spirit Board is just a temporary name we call them when using the board. We're actually calling a spirit with a strong tie to this place, or one of the people participating. In other words, a spirit that just happened to be nearby just felt like answering. <coughs> Sorry. I almost burped. <laughs> um. They don't really- they don't really think of themselves as the Spectre of the Spirit Board. Oh, really? Huh. Feels like some of the mystique has disappeared. Do you mind if I still call you the Spectre of the Spirit Board? Yes. Okay. Um, thanks. Always good to remember to say please and thank you. Alright, it's time to try asking serious questions. Yeah. 
Yo! Who does Mio have a crush on? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. What is the name of the boy Mio has a crush on? Hey! You're gonna ask that kind of question? Doesn't everyone ask this kind of stuff on Spirit Boards? Besides, I'm curious. No, no, no! Let's not do this! <laughs> Dang, the spirit sided with her. Huh. It said no. Guess that must mean you don't have a crush on anyone. Phew. Yeah, that's it. No is correct. Let's move on. Uh, or maybe... Oh, Spectre the Spirit Board. Do you mean the boy isn't in our class? Yo! Wow. Hey, stop that. Don't make me exercise you. If that's the case, then... Oh, Spectre the Spirit Board... Is it a teacher at our school? Saved. Ah, no good, huh? Phew. Yako, cut it out already. We made the effort to sneak in at night. We shouldn't waste time with these questions. You've got a point. Because I think the girl who jumped from the window was dating the teacher. And then it got exposed, or no, he broke up with her, and then she jumped, I think. Okay, here I go. I'll be serious now. Yes, please. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Did Michio... Did Michio Shira... Did Michio Shiraishi, in our class, who died by committing suicide by jumping one week ago, really commit suicide? Oop. Huh? So it really wasn't. I'm not surprised. I never believed it from the start. Now's the important part. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Did Michio Shiraishi die in an accident? Oh. It said yes. So it was an accident and not a suicide. Michio. Then, did she slip and fall from that apartment building? Oop! They got into a fight, and then she fell. Huh? She didn't? What do you mean? Michio didn't die from falling from the apartment building? No way. If that were true... Then why was she lying on the ground like that in the back alley of the apartment building? It was an accident, but not a fall? Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. What happened to Michio on that day? Ooh. Come on, tell us. Seems like it doesn't know the details. Then how about... Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. We want to use that Rite of Resurrection to bring Michio back to life. Do you know where the Rite of Resurrection is? I wonder. Huh? Huh? What? What is this? Stop! I'm scared, Mio! Calm down! You can't let go before it's over! Ah! Such deep sorrow! A resentful memory is flowing into my mind! Oh, that's the wrong voice. <laughs> kill them! Kill those who hear this sound! Kill them all! You have acquired the power of the Cursed Stone in the Fool's Possession. You can use it to kill those who hear the sound produced by the curse echo for more than 30 seconds. The effect will be negated if you are seen in that time. Press use the curse button to produce the sound. Okay, so it's kind of similar to the other guys we interacted with before. Ah! Uh -huh. A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now... Can you hear it? 
curse bearer. You who so strongly desires the right. Kill them. Two things to remember. Yaku Sakazaki. The information they gained from the spirit board suggests that Meichio's death was not a suicide. When they continue to press the spirit board for the location of the Rat of Resurrection, a curse echo suddenly appears. Ooh, it's getting juicy! One week ago, when Michio was still alive. Did you hear? Someone from our school committed suicide. What? Really? Who? I heard that Michio from Class C, right? No way. Michio? She's been acting pretty strange lately, but I still can't believe it. You hear about suicide on the news, but for it to happen here, it's a little scary. By the way, isn't there a girl who transferred into Class C recently? Oh, I heard about her. She's gloomy. Doesn't stand out too much. Did you know that the schools she was at before she transferred also had a suicide? Uh-oh. What, for real? That seems, like, kind of fishy. She's haunted. Did you know? I heard Michio's mom remarried last year. They say her new stepdad is a total jerk. Really? How so? Like, he'd peek on her while she changes and couldn't keep his hands off her. Oh. Damn. I even heard he's an ex-con. If she resists him, he's violent. That's so scary. No way. I couldn't take that. I'd probably think about unaliving. Too, if I had to deal with someone like that at home... Did you hear about Machio in Class C? Yeah, she seemed like the stereotypical honor student in her first year, but... She stopped showing up to class and her grades stopped, started dropping after her third semester. So she offed herself because her grades were bad? No fair. Just thinking about practice tests makes me want to die, too. All anyone cares about is test scores and grades. Dude, kids are so dumb. It's because they don't know much of the world. Homeroom teacher. Huh? There might be some of you who already know, but... A member of our class, Michio Shiraishi, passed away last night. Okay. Okay. Calm down. I know this comes as a surprise, but please keep quiet. The cause of death is still under investigation, and there's nothing we know for certain at the moment. Detailed investigation reports will come from the police, so please don't go spreading any rumors. Got it? We're sending everyone home for today. No dilly-dallying on your way. School will be off tomorrow as well. Hey you. Stop celebrating. Show some respect. There will be a memorial service scheduled next week at the school assembly. If anyone wishes to pay their respects individually... Several days later... Um... Yako? Um, sorry to bug you. It's just, you seem a little different from your usual self. I hope I'm not being a nosy. I'll say your first name. Thanks, Mio. But, thanks, Mio. Was I acting that strangely? Yeah, enough to make me worry. If you want to talk, I'm happy to listen. Yeah, this is the perfect timing. There's actually something I do want to ask you. Yeah? Ask about the spear board. Juicy drama. Um... 
You know that spirit board thing that everybody's been doing? Where you summon a spirit and ask it whether whatever you want? Uh huh. Yeah, I know about it. I want to try it out. There's something I want to know. Why are you telling me this? I mean... You seem like the type to know about that stuff. Oh, I do? Yeah, you look like you're really into that occult stuff. You know, you got that kind of gloomy look. Huh. I don't know how I should feel about that. But you do know how to do it, right? Well, yes. I think I probably know a little more than most. Okay. Please help me. You're my only hope. Hmm. Hey, Mio. You know about the Rider Resurrection, right? Um, yeah. It's that thing Mr. Araishi apparently discovered and wrote an article about. I doubt there's many people who don't know if he's always talking about it. Do you believe it's real? Huh? Well, um... It sounds a little too good to be true to me. But on the off chance that it really works... We could bring Michio back to life with it. I want to find out... I want to find it... I want to find it if there's even the slightest chance of bringing Michio back. But how will you look for it? Right, that's the thing. Michio, she... I wonder why she had to die. She didn't leave a note or anything, but they announced that it was a suicide. That can't be right. She would never kill herself. Unaliving. <laughs> Sorry, it's just so much in this chapter, I'm sorry. Machio was so happy, and always looked on the bright side of things. She loved coming to school. I know she was going through some hard times, but for her to kill herself? I never got the chance to speak with her. She was often absent from school, and when she did come in, she looked depressed. You're right. And that's why everyone was so willing to accept that she committed suicide. They acted like they cared, but all they did was gossip about it. They put together little pieces of information and spread rumors like it's the truth. Isn't that terrible? Yes, it is. I've heard some that are really awful. In the end, the only reason they're able to say stuff like that- In the end, the only reason they're able to say stuff like that is because they aren't personally involved. It's true that she didn't get along with her new stepdad and that her grades went down. But to say things like, how sad. No wonder she killed herself. How dare they? She always told me she was okay whenever I talked with her because I was worried. She would have told me if there was something bothering her so badly that she'd kill herself over it. Uh-huh. Okay. Please help me. You're my only hope. Hmm. I guess I've exhausted that dialogue. Won't let Michio's death be written off like this. Like, maybe she got caught up in something bad. Something bad? People have been talking about that body found in former Yasuda Gardens, right? Some are saying that this town is cursed or something. Yes, there has been a strange feeling around things recently. Um, the thing you want to ask, is it... Yeah, I want to know the truth behind Michio's death, and where the Rat of Resurrection is hidden. I see. Hmm... I don't know if getting the answer to those questions will be as easy as you hope. Please! The teachers and police aren't any help, and there's only so much I can do alone. If there's even the slightest chance, then... Well... Okay. If that would make you feel better, then I'll help. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mio. Okay, then tomorrow after dark. Uh-oh. If they make me kill Mio, I can't do it. Kamagata High School, Class 2C. Back here again. Huh? Ah, are you awake, Yako? Yeah, what happened? 
You can't remember? Let's see. We used the spirit board and... I suddenly heard something like this weird voice. And then I passed out? Yes, as far as I can tell, you aren't experiencing any negative effects. I think it was just a mild shock from how sudden it was. Huh. Oh, was everything okay with the spirit? Yep, it was almost bad, but I got it to leave. More importantly, what is that thing you have in your hand? Huh? In my hand? Whoa, what the heck is this? It looks so freaky. When did I get this? Her stone acquired the fool's possession. Oh, there's so much anger and hatred held within it. It looks like tools. It looks a little like tools that were used for ancient curses. What? That's so scary. Yako, you just said you heard a strange voice, right? Could you tell me what you heard? Anything that you can recall? I think it might be connected to that object. Um... Let's see. It felt like I was at the bottom of a dark place. Then this voice felt like it was echoing in my mind. After that, it just kept shouting, kill them. I see. Thank you. Yako? I think you may have exactly what you need in order to use the Rite of Resurrection. A curse with the power to take people's lives and turn them into soul dregs. What? You mean, this is a real curse? I know I said I wanted to use the Rite of Resurrection to bring back Michio, but... But why? Why me? It makes no sense. Yako, please calm down and listen. I'll come down. I... Yeah. I'm sorry about panicking. No, it's okay. Fear is something we feel in the face of the unknown. Long ago, people would give names to phenomena they couldn't understand in order to live with them. Religion. However, modern day developments in science and culture have pushed for the rejection of things that can't be measured. And so the paranormal have been treated like it doesn't exist. But they've been around since a long, long time ago. If you just understand, you can see that there's nothing to be afraid of. She's a fed. First, calming down is the most important. Accept reality for what it is. Huh? I only gave this stuff a shot because it was popular, but... You really do have a connection with this stuff, don't you? Well, I suppose, to an extent. Hey, Mio, what do I do? Where do I start? Am I cursed? Am I going to die? It's okay. I'll take care of the curse. That's why I'm here in the first place. What? Trust me. I'll take care of things. It'll be alright. Thanks. I was the one who dragged you along to do the spirit board. It's fine. You're desperate to find a way to try and help your friend. But spirit boards are dangerous. You have to take them seriously. So, I'm glad you invited me. Alright. Let's review everything we've learned so far and think of how to move forward. Okay. Ooh, we got an inn! What is the curse? Am I cursed? Well, I've only looked into it a little. But I wouldn't quite say that you're cursed. It's more like you gain the ability to use the power of the curse. So there shouldn't be any kind of negative paranormal effect on you. The power to use a curse? Do you mean this curse stone? Yes. If the curse stone is used under certain conditions, a curse will be placed on someone taking their life and turning it into soul dregs. Soul dregs are said to be required to enact the Rite of, Resur the Rite of Resurrection. Normally, a curse is a spell that would only be usable by Onmyoji of considerable talent. I believe that curse still makes it so that even normal people can use them. 
The mysterious voice of the cursed stone is called the fool's possession, right? Yeah, that's from the seven mysteries of Honjo, right? Our school is said to be connected with a story with the same name. One of the mysteries. Right. I don't think it's a coincidence. This is just a guess, but... It's possible that you were chosen because it could feel your desire for the Rite of Resurrection. So someone like me with no knowledge could curse someone. Yes, but it's still nothing to take lightly. You could end up having it redirected right at you. To tell you the truth, something unusual did happen while we were using the spirit board. It happened right around midnight, I think. This whole area seems to be under the effect of the Feast of Shadows. The Feast of Shadows? Yes. It's a type of spell that temporarily boosts the potency of the supernatural. It also has the effect of making the powers of certain curse echoes manifest more easily. Judging by its strength, I'd say it probably covers about a 3 to 4 kilometer radius. 3 to 4 kilometers? That's big enough to color all of Sumida City. Yes, I think the Feast of Shadows was used to cause the resentment lingering in the area to manifest as curse stones. Someone did this. But who? I don't know enough to say. But it's likely that it was done by someone who wants to uncover the Rite of Resurrection. This isn't something to happen naturally. I see. Ooh, someone's messing around. Yeah, I forgot how much talking is in this game. <laughs> I also want to double check that the audio is synced. Because I forgot to double check. It's good. Because whenever the cam freeze, I just gotta double check. Also, first bite. Dude, it's so good. Holy moly. That double frosting hits. Holy shit. <laughs> Is this a curse of the seven mysteries of Honjo? Then it's possible that there are others who receive curses associated with the other mysteries. Yeah, that voice also said that there are other curse bearers, or whatever you called them. Not only that, apparently you can get a lot of soul drags by killing a curse bearer. Right, that's certainly not good. Even if we have no intention of killing others with the curse, there's a chance you may be targeted if other curse bearers find us. Huh. We'll have to avoid anyone who has another of the curses. That means we should avoid people at night, as much as possible. A cursed stone's powers can only be used in this area under the influence of the Feast of Shadows. The effects also only appear after the sun is set. By setting a limit on when they can be used, the curses are strengthened. So the curses can't be used outside this area or during the day? Correct. But speaking of limits, to actually use a curse to kill someone, it seems there are conditions that need to be met. Conditions? You mean like how my curse echo needs someone to listen to the sound it makes for 30 seconds? To be honest, I don't really understand it. Like, how do we even summon the curse echo or make the sound? Do I just, like, will it? 
Do you mind if I try? Stop! Stop! You shouldn't be using curses so willy-nilly. Even if there are conditions to have to be met, the power to kill someone without leaving behind evidence is dangerous enough. In that sense, maybe you really have been cursed. Um. I'm sorry that you got wrapped up in this situation even though I'm here with you. The curse stone. I think whoever holds it becomes a curse bearer. It would probably be best for me to hold on to it, but... Then I would feel bad about forcing it on you. No, I sense a powerful force rejecting me. I don't think I'd be able to take it. Really? Why? If we tried separating it from you, the curse may trigger. That's how bad I sense it wants to stay with you. No way. That curse stone might look like nothing more than an old Netsuke carving, but I can sense a powerful, resentful energy from it. I don't think it's a good idea for me to even touch it. I may seem like I know what I'm doing, but I don't know how to handle something this powerful. Really? This little thing? If you throw it away or some- or- If you throw it away and someone with bad ideas picked it up, it could be bad. I think it would be safer to avoid the risk of getting anyone else involved and have you hold on to it for now. Well, now I'm kind of freaked out. Anyways, we need to make it to daybreak. I think the curse should waken once this morning. I'll help you find a way to deal with it then. Okay. So there are two things you should remember. First, do not fulfill the conditions while it's night. Second, should you happen to fulfill the conditions, don't use the curse. Right. Unless? But Mio... Yes? If this curse is real, that means I could bring back Michio if I used it, right? The Rider Resurrection would be real too. Yes, that's true. But you can't do that, Yako. But... I feel like it's not the time to worry about that kind of stuff. If Michio... If Michio died in an accident, then I'm sure she didn't want to die. What's the issue with pulling a little curse on a complete stranger? I sort of feel like it wouldn't be a big deal. What is going on with you? You're not acting like yourself, Yako. You would never even consider taking the life of another person. Man, the call out. I thought you were a real one, Mio. Is it the curse's influence on you? Maybe the curse's echo grudge is rubbing off on you. Will you show it to me for a second? She's trying to steal it. Hmm? Is there something inside it? No! Stop! Yako? Oh, I'm sorry. But it's like... I just suddenly really didn't want you to touch it. I understand. I'm sorry. But you need to give up on the Rider Resurrection. What? Because that's the real curse. Using Resurrection as a lore, it tempts curse bearers into using their curses. So it's not real? You have to resist it. Don't let yourself be deceived by some curse. I knew it was too good to be true. But Machio could... I think for tonight, we should get you home to rest. I'll walk you. The curse's influence should subside in the morning. Okay. How does she know so much? She should not know this much. I'm sorry, but I'm telling you that you need to give up on the right. It's beyond us. Even a single curse stone alone is too much to handle. Bringing back the dead isn't something so simple. I know how much it hurts, but please focus on just worrying about surviving tonight. Even now, we're in great danger. Okay. Let's get going then, shall we? We'll take the same route we took to get here. Right. We'll be fine, right? There's no one else at school, is there? I think so. 
The night shift janitor shouldn't be patrolling this late at night either. Huh? huh? What? Why'd the lights go out? Mio? Are you okay? I don't want to look up. Hello? Mio? She's not here. What's happening? Where... Where are you? <laughs> Dude, I can't see anything! No, I don't want to. She's gonna be on the ceiling. Okay, I'm lost. Oh! Hello? Uh... Huh? Oh no! What was that? Get me out of here, Mio! Mio! Mio? Where are you? Yaku! I'm here! Over here! Can you see me? Huh? Where? I can't see anything. Dude, I can't see anything! Oh! No! Oh! There you are, Mio! This way! Over here! Be careful! Your field of vision is being limited! Right. Can we hold hands, please? Not in a gay way. Oh no. I can't do this. <laughs> Dude, why do they not carry flashlights or their cell phones? Like, come on. That sucks. You know what else sucks? Watching ads. Because, guys, we are an hour into stream. So, you know what? It's time for me to run some ads. I know it's a bit early, but I don't want to run an ad when I'm talking. So, if you want to avoid that ad, all you must do is subscribe for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ads reviewing all month long. Or, you can link your Amazon Prime to Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe to see if you got a sub available. Smile. I'm gonna have more of my cookie, too. This shit is crazy. Holy. It's also nice because the cookie is really crispy. It's actually fully baked. Cause y'all know crumble cookies are wrong. I don't want to do this. We're already like three sections into the story. That's pretty far. Escape from Komaga. Escape from Komagatahai. After Yako acquires the curse of the fool's possession, Mio tries to persuade her to give up on going after the Rite of Resurrection. The effects of other curse echoes are already appearing at the school, so the two hurry to get out of the classroom. Can we, we can just jump out the window. Oh, wait, we're on the second floor, though. It's classroom 2C. Eh, we can't really get out the window. Yako Sakazaki, 1 a.m. Inside Komagata High School. Hey, Mio. What was that just now? Could it be another curse echo different from mine? I think so. Yes. We may have been discovered by another curse bearer. Oh. Huh? What's wrong? Shh. Someone's there. In that classroom. What? What? 
Something moved inside. Well... Um, ignore it! We don't need to check it out, right? Let's hurry and get out of here. Maybe. The person who used that curse echo may be in there. If we could just see who it is, it could help us later. Right. Okay, just a glimpse. Be careful. No. Well, can you see anything? Try and get a look around. Where are we peeking from? Did we go? We went in the classroom. Oh. It's the teacher. Ah. Huh? Is that our homeroom teacher, Mr. Chonochi? And the person with him is he told me from class A. What? Oh my, what is going on here? Uh, that bastard. He's at it again. I have to kill him. No, I'm not doing it. I won't let him get away with this. What? I'm not doing it. The curse. I could kill him with it. No, Yako. You can't use the curse stone. What's gotten into you? Resist it. I didn't press it. Who's there? Is someone there? This is bad. We have to go before they see us. Whew. I ain't killing nobody. I'm just a normal high school girl. And then, my life got flipped upside down. Roll Disney Channel intro. <laughs> huh. It seems like they're not coming after us. Let's hope they didn't see our faces. But Yako, what came over you all of a sudden? Sorry. Thanks for stopping me. It's like this uncontrollable rage suddenly welled up inside me. I wonder what's gotten into me. I can barely even remember what happened. I'm really sorry. I don't... I do think it's partly the curse's influence on you, but we certainly saw something shocking. My heart's still pounding. I'm a little surprised you know he told me from Class A. She tends to stand out a lot. Gotcha. Well, she certainly does dress like a delinquent, though she barely shows up to school. But could Mr. Jinoki or Hitomi really be a curse bearer? They're behind us. I don't know, but we should be careful just in case. Yako? Hmm. When I give the signal, run. Go straight for the entrance. Don't look back. No matter what. Huh? Why? Did something happen? Something happened, didn't it? What about you, Mio? I'll be fine. We'll meet up outside the school we'll meet up outside the school gates. If I'm not there in ten minutes, go straight home, okay? Okay. Go. Oh, right. Don't look back. Don't look back. I have to get outside. Let's see, to get to the gates, I go by the gym and... Hmm. What are you doing, miss? Ah. You shouldn't be here this late. Don't you know what time it is? Oh, Mr. Uh, Shimaya. Well, if it isn't, little Yako. Anyway, students aren't supposed to be outside playing around at night. School janitor, Makato Ashimiya. I know you're rough around the edges, but I didn't take you from one to act out like this. 
I'm sorry. Sorry. I forgot something back in the classroom. Hmm. No sass today, huh? Realized you were in the wrong, did you? Yeah. Forget something in the classroom, huh? You're a piece of work. Hmm? But you don't have nothing with you. Oh. Wait. You do. What's that in your hand? Huh? Well, um, this is what I forgot. I got it from my grandpa. It's really important to me. Hmm. Girls these days sure have weird tastes. Well, okay. Better head straight home if you're done. I won't tell on you. No, wait. I can't let you walk home alone this late. All right, just wait a little. I'll hurry and lock things up. Oh, but... Ooh. Has it been ten minutes? She said to leave without her. I'm worried. Um, actually, a friend of mine is still inside. I think they'll be here soon. That's so. Who's your friend? Um, my classmate, Mio Kurosuzu. Oh, that transfer student. Breaking school rules already, huh? Didn't take her for the time. No, I was the one who dragged her here. Well, whatever. I'll go take a look. It'll be safe if you go home together. Oh, right. She's in the first floor hallways. Be careful. Though so you know you... She's in the first floor hallways. Be careful. Though so you don't know what might be in there. What's that supposed to mean? First floor, yeah. I'll be right back. Okay, he's going, not me. That's actually kind of good. Yako Sakazaki, 2 a.m. Bumagata High School, entrance. We waiting. She's late. I've been waiting for 20 or 30 minutes, but there's no sign of her. I'm starting to get worried. I'm gonna take a look. It's the right thing to do. Mio? Are you there? Can we not turn the lights on? Like, seriously. Oh. Huh? Oh. What? Mio, what happened? Where did I go wrong this time? Oh, it's my fault. It's all my fault. I left her alone with a curse bear. Mio. I'm sorry. I... The truth is... Yako Sakazaki, deceased. Okay, come on. My, my, Peason. You seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. But this was bound to happen. There is someone who must not be trusted. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? If so... You may choose to withhold important information from that person. Fear not. You may try as many times as you like from the event in question. Okay. The janitor was too nice. I was like, maybe he actually is a good guy, but he's not a good guy. We should not have told him that Mio's inside. Very well. Dang it. Hmm? 
but you don't have nothing with you. Okay, why do we show him the curse? Like, we're so stupid. Wait, he said he's gonna lock the door here. I didn't notice it. How were we able to get back inside? He's a liar. Uh, but... I'll go home alone. All oh, right. Mr. Januki was actually looking for you inside the main building. Was that? He's here right now. What's he thinking? I don't know. He was in class 3B on the second floor just a bit ago. Well, I suppose that means I can't be locking up yet. Second floor, you say? I'll go take a peek. Be back in a jiff. Um, my house is really close by. I'll be fine on my own, really. That's so. Huh. The snack shop, right? Suppose you'll be fine, then. Be careful, not here. Stay on the big, well-lit streets. If something happens, shot fire. Okay. You worry too much. Well... We wouldn't want to be losing any more students. Though I imagine you know that better than anyone. Yes, you're right. Two AM Yaku Sakazaki. Bomagata High School front gates. Ooh, we're outside now. Mio's late. I've been waiting for 20 or 30 minutes, but there's no sign of her. Huh? There's someone coming down the road. Shogo. Oh, that's the student or teacher? That's... Oh no, a teacher. It's Mr. Araishi. He looks on edge. I wonder what he's doing. Wait, he's the one who discovered the Rite of Resurrection. It wouldn't be strange for him to be involved with the curses. I wonder if he has a curse stone. What do I do? But it's way past the ten minutes Mio said she'd be here by. I managed to escape. I can't let that go to waste. I need to get out of here before anyone sees me. I left her? I'm such a bad friend. Yako Sakazaki, 2 a.m. Yako's home. <gasps> Yo. We made it. Ah, I'm home. Thank goodness. I don't think the walk has ever felt so long. Nobody will be able to use their curse once it's light outside. I need to go look for Mio as soon as this morning. But for now, I need some rest. No way we made it! Yo! Failure to escape. And then a successful getaway. Ain't no way we lived. I guess we go back to the mother POV. Conversation on the bridge. So, what next? The big question now was what the rest of the curse bearers are up to. Luckily, the Sumida River is a good distance from any of the seven mysteries. It's unlikely the other curse bearers will come all the way here. I could finally have a moment to think. I see. All right. Woman. Excuse me. Hmm? There was not a woman before. I don't remember this. Strange woman. Where did she come from? It's like she appeared out of nowhere. I didn't mean to startle you. I'm terribly sorry if I've gotten the wrong people. 
But would you happen to be curse bearers? Huh? Curse bearers? What's that then? Um, I mean someone who's gathering souls for the Rite of Resurrection. You have heard of the Rite of Resurrection, haven't you? Everybody's talking about it. Follow me intrigued. Care to tell me more, miss? What was your name again? Oh, silly me. It's Ayame Tono. University student, Ayame Tono. She says her name's Ayame. I'd guess she'd be around 20. She must be brave, walking around alone this late. Or maybe there's more to it. There's more to the Red Resurrection than meets the eye, you see. So the best way to collect and so the best way to collect soul dregs is to kill other curse bearers. And that's about the size of it. I hope it wasn't too much to follow. No no. I think I'd get the gist. Funny old world we live in, huh? So are you saying you're one of these curse bearers? No, well, not quite. It's complicated. I'm not, but Yutaro is. Yutaro? Is that your boyfriend? Well, heavens no, <laughs> just a friend. His full name is Yutaro Namiya. His full name is Yutaro Namigaki. We are, I suppose you could say, partners in crime. Funny way of putting it. So... Where is this Yutaro now? Well, about that, he's not actually a curse bearer anymore. He's more like a former curse bearer. Former? How so? I don't really know the details myself, but apparently he lost his curse stone. Typical, right? He makes such a show of being a top student, only to flunk where it counts. So, now I'm out here looking for curse bearers myself, if you want something done right. He lost it. How did he do that? I wasn't with him at the time, so I don't know exactly what happened. All I know is that he came back saying he didn't have it anymore. Although, well... It's strange that you'd probe into that of all things. I'm just the curious sort, that's all. Sorry if it's a touchy subject. Oh, I don't mind. I don't per- Oh, I don't mind. I don't particularly care about keeping it a secret. Dude, she's a freak. Yutaro can be a little irrational sometimes, so I have to keep a level head on my shoulders. So, anyway, mind if I ask why you thought I was a curse bearer? Oh, that? I'm terribly sorry. I was so rude. I saw the two of you out late at night, and I saw... I saw the two of you... Out late at night, and I suppose I made assumptions. Gotcha. Sorry if we gave you the wrong idea. Out of interest, what was your plan if we did turn out to be curse bearers? Great question! And the answer is... I was going to ask you very nicely for your curse stones. And you thought we'd have given them to you. Just like that. Well, maybe not. But you know what they say. You never know until you ask. You must really love your boyfriend if you're willing to try something that risky. Oh goodness, no. <laughs> We're just friends. My life doesn't revolve around him, you know. Anyway, you aren't curse bearers, so I'm just bothering you, aren't I? <laughs> Please ignore me. So... What are you trying to do with this Rite of Resurrection? Well, Yutaro has his own plan all laid out. I don't know if I can get behind it, though. It seems... How do I put it? Self-centered? I mean, if you got a chance to resurrect the dead, it would be a waste not to use it on someone that really matters, right? So I was planning to steal his curse stone at the last second and use it for myself. Well, until he lost it anyway. Oh. But don't tell Yutaro I was going to do that, okay? I don't think he'd be happy to hear it. Of course. Keeping secrets is my business. 
My, aren't you dashing? <laughs> Side eye. Sounds like you really have your heart set on this right. What were you hoping to use it on? Do you promise you won't laugh? Cross my heart. Well then, let me tell you my master plan. Prepare to be amazed. Ahem. I'm an art student, you see. Woodblock prints are my specialty. Ukiyo-e in particular. Ukiyo-e, huh? You must be a cultured lady. Really? Do you think so? Everybody says it's a strange interest for a girl to have. You know, people often think of Yukue as some inaccessible high-class art form, but it, but that's actually totally untrue. Back in the Edo period, it was the art for the masses. For the masses. Back in the Edo period, it was the art for the masses, amusement for the common people. So when you think about it, we feel exactly the same thrills from every brushstroke as they did back then. Isn't that fascinating? Huh. Yeah, I guess. As far as I'm concerned, the undisposed king of Yukui is the one and only Hokusai. Have you heard of him? Sure I have. He's famous. Didn't he live somewhere around here back in the Edo period? That's right. You are just as knowledgeable as you look. His 36 views of Mount Fuji are so iconic, they're the only works of his most people in know. But Hokusai was so much more than just mountains and waves. That's only the teeny tiny tip of a veritable iceberg of work. I have got to admit, I only really knew him for those landscapes myself. Oh, don't worry about it. Anyone can learn. When Hokusai died at the age of 90, he left behind over 30,000 drawings. That's multiple drawings a day for 80 years. Amazing, right? So he kept on drawing right up to his old age, huh? Impressive. But even in his final years, he was never satisfied with his own work. His dying words were, Should heaven afford me but five more years, I shall finally become a true artist. Even on his deathbed, he still thought he had more to learn. He was already the greatest painter and artist of his era. Who knows what he could have done if with more time? Well, that's what I want to find out. Hmm? Hold on. Are you saying... Besides, he always said he wanted to move out of a hundred houses, but he only made it to 93. Isn't that just tragic? Oh no. Nuh-uh. No way this is going where I think it's going. Imagine the masterpieces he could create with modern techniques. I feel all dizzy just thinking about it. You gotta be kidding me. So, if I understand correctly, you wanted to use the Red Resurrection to... That's right. I want to bring back Hokusai back to life. Well, that's certainly a novel idea. That's what she'd use it on. What a waste. Oh gosh, is it that time? I should be going. I need to get my hands on a curse bearer before daybreak. Sorry for flagging you down out of the blue like that. Best of luck. I mean, it's for the greater good, right? Everybody else is being selfish. I'm trying to say someone they know who died. She just wants to, like, progress art. Well, there goes trouble. If we're going after curse stones, we should keep an eye on her. Two, if we can. Why do you say that? Before she left, she wished us best of luck. She's got at least an inkling that we're curse bearers. My. There's a good chance we'll clash sooner or later. We're after the same thing, after all. You head back to the mansion, ma'am. I think I'll tail her for a while. We continue on. No more curses. Haraway Shigima. Haraway has received multiple Haraway Haraway Haraway. Haraway has received multiple reports about other suspected curse bearers. Although concerned about Ayame Tono, who was apparently also after the curse stones, she entrusts Richard to continue his investigation. Haraway 
Harawe, Harawe, Shigima, 3 a.m. Shigima Mansion. Back here again. I left Richard to continue looking for curse bears and came home alone. I can hear the wind rustling in the trees. The old Shigima Mansion. We rebuilt it here after the Great Kanto Earthquake. It's always stayed the same all these years. Even the war didn't touch it. I never liked it growing up. I always wanted to live somewhere more modern. Will this really be enough to gather the soul dregs I need? What if nobody uses any more curses? I'll lose my chance to bring them back. What's that? Mockingbird number five. Also, I just learned when that little pop up where it says files updated, I would move the cursor to X out, but you could just press B. I didn't know. I'm clueless. Guess that's all that's here. Why is there a choice? Okay. <laughs> I've seen everything. Go inside. Surely they won't follow me inside the home. Back to the detective. A threatening phone call. After persuading Araishi, the curse bearer of the ever-burning lantern, to give up his stone, Sutsumi and Erio have obtained three curse stones in total. Oh my god, they're speedrunning! I forgot. They continue their investigation of the town and search the remaining curse bearers. They're cracked. Tetsuo Sutsumi, 4 a.m. Road. Just any old road? Well, with this we'll have visited every place connected to the Seven Mysteries. This is the last spot, huh? And we got nothing to show for it. Even though every last location looks suspect from top to bottom. Maybe we came at the wrong time. There might not have been any curse bears around. Sounds like we'll need another gun before morning comes then. Or maybe. Someone's been observing our movements. What? No way! It's just a thought. Either way, we should check out this last place. Let's hope we finally get a lead! Okay. <laughs> the voice I gave him is so silly. Oh, why not? Kinshi Body Park. Oh wait, this was where Shogo was, I think. Kinshi Body Park. Erm, um, Shogo. You okay, bud? Whoa. Whoa, what the hell is this? Is he dead? Damn it. We were too late. Was this a curse too? Hang on. I'm gonna call this in. I'll leave it to you. I'm gonna take a look around. Boss? Bad news? What is it? Another mysterious death was reported in the area just now. The medical unit and forensics team are on their way, but it'll be a while before they arrive. Ah, uh, that is bad news. They got someone else. 
You think this is the work of the curse bearer? With suspicious deaths popping up one after another, we have to assume it is. Shit. Guess we'll be stuck waiting around for a while. I can't talk to him. No! Huh? Boss, that phone is ringing. What phone? Oh, the phone booth. I don't want to. Boss, the phone. What about it? It's ringing. It sure is. Aren't you going to pick it up? Hmm? Huh? Why would I? Why wouldn't you? It's super suspicious. I checked their surroundings earlier. There were no signs of a curse bearer or any curse echoes around. The ringing of the phone is the only sound cutting through the quiet park. Hello, Sojo. A young man in his 20s killed in cold blood. He's definitely dead, but I can't quite discern the cause from what I've seen. There's no obvious external wounds, but... What is that leaking from his mouth? Water? Well, there's the playground. Fine, I guess I'll pick up the phone. I'll answer it! Well, we better go check it out. You're right, but be careful. It could be a curse. I didn't think of that. Hey, I said we. You expect me to go alone? You're the one who's tough against this stuff. Don't worry, boss. You can do it. Go on now. Damn it. Um, hello. Kinshi Body Park phone booth. Evening, Detective Sutsumi. How are things looking out there? Who is this? <laughs> I finally got him. The real deal. Detective Tetsuo Tsutsumi himself. Oh, wait. That's Chief Inspector Tsutsumi now, isn't it? You've come a long way since we last met. I asked you I'd I asked you to identify yourself. Man, have you forgotten already? After all the time we spent together. What a time that was. As I recall, I gave you quite the runaround. What? Or, wait. Is this... Fumichika Nejima? Oh, what? Did you say Fumichika Nejima? Like the one from the Nejima murders? Ding, 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 you got it! I had a feeling that the great chef should soon- Chef? <laughs> ding, 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 you got it! I had a feeling that the great chef's Tsutsumi would rip- I said chef! <laughs> I better cut this out. Ding, 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 you got it! I had a feeling that the great chief Tsutsumi would remember me. I spent 20 long years in a cell thanks to you. That shit was not easy. You should be thanking me. Should have given you plenty of time to think and atone for your sins. <laughs> that I did. I repented. My conscience is clean as a whistle. Bullshit. Twenty years in prison doesn't even begin to make up for the shit you did. I don't know about that. After all, the justice system was gracious enough to grant me parole. What? Is this the real Fumichika Nijima? He must still have a grudge against me for arresting him. So is this this so is this payback? Damn it. What is your goal? Now now, you gotta understand. I've repented. See the light. 
I've been a good boy since I granted parole. I even got myself a job. I've been real serious about walking the right path. Well, that's very nice. Keep it up. But it was no good. When the opportunity arose, it was impossible to hold myself back. I knew I had to give a little token of thanks. I knew I had to give you a little token of thanks, or I'd never truly be able to have a fresh start. Do you get what I'm saying? No thanks, I don't need anything. No need to do all that for me. Just trying to live a quiet life. Oh, it's no hassle. No hassle at all. It would be all too easy to just kill you, to tear you apart. But that wouldn't be as satisfying, certainly not after 20 fucking years of waiting. That's a long time to nurture a grudge. You fucking bet it is. I let it gnaw at me, grow inside of me. I thought of nothing else. All that time, I played model prisoner, endured the harassment those asshole guards threw at me. I did it all for you, Satsumi. So please, just accept my dearest and most sincere feelings. Sorry, but I'm afraid I don't feel the same about you. Shut the fuck up. That attitude of yours is why I'm saving you for last. How do you know I was here? What are you planning? Whatever it is, bring it on. I'm not running away. I just told you I'm not coming for you yet. Pay attention to what people... I just told you I'm not coming for you yet. Pay attention to people talk, shithead. You see, this time, this time, I want to see you on your knees, weeping in despair, begging me for mercy. Huh. Oh no, I'm so sorry, dear Najima. Please forgive me. I won't do it again. Shut the fuck up. This is exactly why I've always hated you so fucking much. It was worth a shot. Did you really think that would sate me, asshole? You must be crazy. Well then, we're both crazy. We've got so much in common. We should be friends. Enjoy cracking your jokes while you still can. I'm going to kill everyone you care about. One by one. Till there's no one left. Sorry to disappoint. But I'm a lone wolf. I don't have anyone like that in my life. Um, boss? Oh, what about me? Or, wait, are you just trying to protect me? There's not a single person you care about. I wonder what your sweet daughter would think if she were to hear that. Don't you fucking dare. I'm warning you. Oh, very nice. This is more like it. She's living all in now, isn't she? Attending university and all. Such a good girl. Oh my. Don't tell me that she just happens to live in Homdro. What? She does. No, for forget it. This isn't funny, asshole. I'm going to find you and make you pay. Ah, I love it. Keep going. I want to hear you lose your mind. It's music to my ears. Huh? Fuck you. I look forward to chopping up your precious daughter. It'll be just like old times. I won't let that happen. How do you know where I am? <laughs> this is my favorite part. The sound of confusion in your voice. It's to die for. Hmm, this is delicious. I can't get enough. I'm not telling you shit. Have fun racking your tiny little brain for it. <laughs> hmm, I guess I could give you a little hint. Go on. Well, you see. I have the one-sided read. Huh? Satsumi, so, you have the evergreen beach, no? Najima. You're a curse bearer. You're using the power of the curse. Indeed. What a peculiar curse it is. But that's where the Mayans end. <laughs> God damn it. The curse echo could not have fallen into worse hands. Ah. One more thing we should discuss. 
In fact, it's the most important thing. I thought you were finally going to shut up. I'm already sick of you, so I'll pass. Oh, but you don't want to miss this. It's the main course! Oops, wrong button. <laughs> I could just go off and do your daughter, but something tells me you'd get bored. No, I'm good. You got me real fired up. You're in my head. Well done. But this is a gift Taylor made for you. I'm gonna kill all the people you swore to protect. Every last person living here. You couldn't. Oh, but with this curse amount, I can. I'll give you until dusk. But then, I could probably get a couple hundred people or so. And it'll all be your fault. Oh, it must be so hard to know they'll all die because of you so tragic. It must be tearing you apart. <laughs> Don't fuck with me. There's no way an amateur like you could pull up a curse that strong. Unfortunately for you, I absolutely can. My curse stone is a particularly strong one, which means I can have my fun without needing to hold back one bit. It's almost like the Feast of Shadows was cast just for me. You're surprisingly well informed about this. Who was it that tipped you off? Hmm, who knows? Then how about I kill myself first? And ruin all your fun. What about that, asshole? Idiot. You think I'd call it off just because you were dead? There's no running away for you. I'll find you. I won't let you get away with this, Najima. You got 12 hours. Do you really think your parled tree little organization will be able to make a dent in my plans? Oh, the sacrifices made will be heavy. I can't wait to see you sobbing with regret. <laughs> Oh. And I'll even have enough soul dregs to pull up the Rite of Resurrection! How splendid! Wait. Najima, you're after the... Anyway, see you around. Bye-bye now. Dang. That was heavy. Can't they, like, backtrack the goal? Boss? Ryo, did you catch all that? Najima, who oh, what is he planning? Who knows? For now, we need to find him and get him into custody. Send word to HQ. But the fact that the seven mysteries are wrapped up in this is gonna make things tricky. You mean with Najima being a curse bearer? Just our luck, really. He couldn't have been a worse guy. Sounds like his curse will be able to kill a lot of people at once. I'd like to avoid getting our investigators caught in the crossfire. We'll use them to find out where he is. But then we're going in alone. We should try to collect as many cursed stones as we can before then. Let's hurry. Aye, aye, boss. Later. It was reported that a total of three suspicious deaths were discovered that night. The Jima's threats, along with the curses, were kept secret from the general public. However, the Honjo serial killer is still made in international headlines. I'll reset. However, the Honjo serial killer is still made international headlines following the death of police officer Hajima Yoshimi. At Susumi's request, a large-scale investigation was launched into Fumichika Najima's whereabouts. Susumi and Ario themselves spent the rest of the night looking for curse bearers in the area, but their search ended in vain. And with that, the curtain closed on that cursed night. Twelve hours to sunset. Ooh, now we're in daytime. We continue on. I kind of want to go back to the high schoolers for now. It told me his help. Bringing her friend back from the dead means she'll have to pay the price. Yako makes it home safely, but still isn't sure about how to proceed with a curse. She worries about Mio as the night passes. We continue on. Yako Sakazaki, 8 a.m. 
Yako's home. She made it. Oh, good morning, Yako. Huh? Yako, rise and shine. Huh? You're up. Oh, it's, it's morning. Uh, I... Are you okay? Can you remember your name? Um, duh, I'm... Yako. Yes, I'm Yako Sakazaki. Good. Seems like you're fully awake. Oh, Mio. Thanks for last night. Was everything okay? Yep. Still alive. I couldn't dispel the curse echo or learn the engine if you used it, but I managed to at least get away. But in that situation, it's the best you can hope for. I'm sorry I got you involved in something so dangerous. I meant to look for you as soon as the sun rose, but I was just so sleepy. I can't even remember when I fell asleep. It's okay. It's only natural to be exhausted after what you went through. Besides, I also feel bad that you've been wrapped up in all this. It's supposed to be my job to prevent that from happening. Oh yeah, you said something about that last night. Just who are you exactly, Mio? Oh, well, um, the truth is, I've been trained in things having to do with the supernatural. Well, you mean you can learn that kind of stuff like you would with flower arranging? I had quite the eventful childhood. Huh, that sounds like it must have been tough. Yes, it would take a long time to explain, so I'll leave... Yes, it would take a long time to explain, so let's leave it at that for now. As fate would have it, I've ended up as the apprentice, or maybe more like assistant, to the notable paranormal expert. Schools have always been more paranormal disturbances. Wait. Schools have always had more paranormal disturbances because young people tend to be more susceptible to these things. I'm sent to schools that may experience something paranormal and put a stop to it before it happens. Wow. That's amazing. So, it's like a part-time job you do while also being a student? Well, I do help maintain public order, but it's all part of my training, so I don't get any money. Oh, you got a rough den. But still, that really is amazing. You were so cool when you faced off against the evil spirit. I never knew if I should be happy when you... I need water. <laughs> I never know if I should be happy when you compliment me like that. But anyways, that's why it's up for me to resolve any paranormal issues at the school. And why I'm gonna look into the cause of all this. But for now, let's head to school. Yeah. Oh, do you have your career stone? Now that it's daytime and his power is diminished, I should be able to haunt out. Now that it's daytime and his power is diminished, I should be able to hold on to it. Want to give it a try? Right. I do have it, but... Yako? Is it really so wrong? Trying to bring Michio back, I mean? I can't approve of it. The ride may seem like a dream come true, but if it involves taking the lives of other people, then... Yeah, true. I want to make sure that this whole ritual ends without anyone getting hurt. That's what I believe, and what I'll put before anything else. I'm sorry, but is it okay if I hold on to it? Yako. I promise I won't use the curse, no matter what. But maybe there's some other way. I just have this feeling that I shouldn't give up on the possibility just yet. That said, I'll help you. Even if it's to stop the curses. For the Machio that still exists within me, I'll settle things so that we can move forward. Okay. But if you ever feel in danger, you can give me the stone... Okay. But if you ever feel in danger, you can give me the curse stone at any point. Right. Thank you, Mio. Okay, then. Let's go. Just a normal day at school, where two totally normal high school girls, Yako Sakazaki, 10 a or 8 a.m., 
Kuma got to high school. Front gates. Uh oh. Why is there a cop outside? Huh? I thought it was unusually a noisy. There's a big group of people and police in front of the school. Did something happen? If the police are here, then something must have. I'll go ask. Thanks. Uh oh. This isn't good. Huh? What happened? Um, don't panic, okay? The first teacher who came to work this morning found something. Okay. Mr. Genochi was found dead in the middle of the school grounds. What? They're closing the school for today. But that's not all. I didn't know this either since I didn't watch the morning news, but... Rumors are spreading there's a number of bodies were found nearby. What? There's no way. Why? Could it be? Because of the curse? We don't have enough to say. From what I heard, Mr. Genochi's body was in the middle of the grounds. But his body was covered in bruises, like he'd fallen from somewhere high. Weird. Taking into account his unnatural death and the timing, it's very likely it has something to do with the curse. You're saying someone used their curse on him last night. Seems like it, doesn't it? But that's so scary. Ah. Huh. So the curses really do kill people. And someone used it? Shoo. Keep your voice down, okay? What would happen if another curse bear heard you? Oh, sorry. I wish we had a little more information, but they've locked up the front gate. Maybe we could sneak in through the back entrance. Hmm? That person over there. Is that Hitomi Okuda? You're right. That's unusual. Oh, but she was at the school last night, too. She must know something I'm a- She must know something I'm a- <laughs> A moot. She must know something about Mr. Chinuchi. Let's see what she has to say. Oh, Mio. Wait for me. Huh? So you're telling me the two of you were the ones at the school last night? No sense hiding it, then. Plus, I owe you one, Mio. I'll tell you everything I know. Thank you. She owes you? Oh, um, yeah. Right after I transferred here, there was a bit of trouble. She gave me one of those, uh, what was it? Oh, exorcisms. Huh, so that's what it was. Did you hear about Mr. Genochi? Heard about it. I've known about it since last night. I saw that asshole bite. <laughs> I saw that asshole bite it on the school grounds myself. What? You saw it happen? Tell us about it. What happened exactly? Don't really know myself. It was pitch black. What? Ca what I can tell you. It was almost dawn. Probably around three. He started freaking out all of a sudden, ran out onto the ground like something was chasing him, then screamed. Ah, somebody help me! Forgive me, Michio! Or something like that while he was running around. Michio? He mentioned Michio? Was there anyone else on the grounds? It was too dark to see where I was. But for just a second, I think I saw a girl in a school uniform with her hair in braids. Oh? I didn't go out to make sure, so it could have been nothing for all I know. Then I heard him begging for his life, like, I was wrong, or I'll do anything. Then all of a sudden, his arms and legs snapped, even though he was just standing there. His arms and legs broke without anything being done to him. He fell over and quit moving, so I thought I'd better get out of there. Then he croaked. That's all I saw. I see. But from what you told us, it almost sounds like Michio's ghost chased down Mr. Januki and killed him. Hell, if I know anything about that, I'm just telling you what I heard him say.
Did you tell that story to the police? Nope. And I ain't gonna. Can't count on them for shit. Not like they'd believe such an insane story anyways. Right. But there must be at least one person in the police worth trusting, right? Yeah, I guess. There was this one cop who always got on my case about stuff. But he died just the other day. Oh, this was the... They would play, like, games with one of the cops. And she was, like, the good delinquent. Oh, he did? I'm sorry to hear that. Everyone who gets involved with me ends up dead. Maybe I really am cursed. Pisses me off. You've got it all wrong. The spirit that possessed you wasn't that kind of spirit. Huh? It wasn't. Yeah, that was just an unfortunate coincidence. Though I'm sure that was hard enough for you. That's all I know about that asshole's death. Hey Mio, I've been thinking something. Hmm? The way she described it reminded me of something. The way Mr. Janoki died? It sounds a lot like how Machio died. Huh? Of course, I, I didn't see it myself, but... The state Machio's body was in? It was like she had fallen from high up. Could they have been killed by the same curse? I don't think so. The curses of the seven mysteries haven't manifested when she died. And if we can trust what the spirit board said, and if we can trust what the spirit board said, then Michio died in an accident. Oh, right. Hitomi, were you possessed by some kind of evil spirit? I don't understand it all too well myself. What I can say for sure is... Thanks to Mio, the weird symptoms that were happening to me all went away. Yep, some people are born with a natural sensitivity to the paranormal. They tend to end up isolated as they struggle to relate to the people around them. They also tend to draw spirits to them naturally. This can cause strange symptoms they don't understand like headaches, muscle stiffness, and hallucinations. Even memory problems. I'm sure it must have been very hard. So, that's how it works, huh? Do people also have their personality taken over when they're possessed? Hmm. It is possible with spirits who have a very close relationship to their target, like siblings or a parent or a child. But you also never hear about people being taken over completely. It's when the two parties aren't in sync that those negative effects can start to appear. So the seances or whatever you see on TV are all bogus. Not quite. There are mediums and diviners who can align their minds with the spirits they call. Though there are people on TV who are just putting on performance. Huh. There are people who in life had extremely powerful spirit sense or a deep connection with the person. But even they shouldn't be able to completely over but even they shouldn't be able to completely take over the person they possess. And even if they could, it'd only be enough to pressure them to choose certain behaviors that wouldn't be unusual for them to do on their own to begin with. Hmm. But if that's the case, wouldn't you not know if you were choosing that behavior of your own will or not? Hence why there are lots of cases where people don't even realize they're possessed. Though the spirit may influence the behavior and memories of the host, the deeper their connection in life, the easier it is for that to occur. I see. Getting possessed by a spirit is pretty complicated, huh? It must have been tough for you being possessed for so long, you tell me. Hmm. Whatever might happen to me doesn't make any difference. Me being able to see spirits and stuff has nothing to do with how things ended up like this. Yeah, it's not like being able to see them is your fault either. The same goes for me. Maybe it's just something we have to live with. I think you have a knack for it yourself, Yako. I bet you could see them too with a little training. Uh, I think I'll pass. <clears throat> so that's why you do the job you do, huh, Mio? I thought she was a weirdo when she showed me all of a sudden. Wait. I thought she was a weirdo when she showed up all of a sudden saying she was gonna exercise me. If you hadn't said anything, I probably would have knocked your lights out. 
You tried to perform an exorcism on her without telling her anything? Um, you see, in my experience, most people don't understand no matter how much I explain. They only accept my explanation after they see the results. Huh, I guess that makes sense. Oh, I misclicked. You know what is not a mistake, though? Me running ads, because guys, we are. Two hours in the stream, so it's time for you to run some ads. You can avoid that ad by subscribing for $4.99, just $5. Skip your coffee and get ad preview with all month long. Or you can link your Amazon Prime to Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe, see if you got a sub available. Do it. So I'm just double checking this. I kind of want to see what my res looks like right now. Okay, it looks fine. I think I might reduce my frame rate again. Just because like I want my camera to be brighter. This is a hundred. so much talking. <laughs> it's Omi. Last night before you witnessed Mr. Genucci's collapse, can I ask what he and you were doing in the classroom? You gonna tell the cops? Oh, right. With everything that happened with Mr. Genucci... They'll suspect you, we told them, so we saw you with him last night. Anytime something happens with someone like me, all well, those shitty adults start jumping to conclusions. I understand. I won't tell them. You wouldn't have been able to kill him anyway. If you say so, then I don't mind telling you about it. So, last night... A piece of shit, Janucci called me over here, acting like he was gonna attack me or something. What? How terrible. Whatever. I'm glad he's dead. He had it coming. Calling people worthless and a cancer on society when he doesn't know shit about them? That asshole was the only one- That asshole was the one always acting like scum if you ask me. Is that so? Could you tell us in more detail why he called you out in the middle of the night? Hmm. It's hard to explain where to start. It's hard to explain where to start. What did you mean by Mr. Genucci's acting like scum? Was he doing something bad? You know Michio Shiraishi, right? The girl who killed herself? Huh? Michio? I don't know everything, but that creep of a teacher had some dirt on her. And he was using it to blackmail her, call her up after school and make her do whatever he wanted. What? what? What do you mean when you say whatever you wanted? I'll leave it to your imagination. Nothing that a couple model students like you would ever get involved in. No, no way that's... How? What do you mean by dirt? I don't know anything about this. How could I not have known about... How could I not have known about this? Yato, I know how you feel, but try to calm down. 
You got guts acting like you were a friend. Shouldn't you really did a number on both Machio's body and soul? She probably felt like she couldn't tell anyone. Like she had to suffer alone. No. How terrible. But tell me, how do you know about this? I just happened to walk in on it. I know the spots around school people go to when they want to stay out of sight. He ran off in a panic when I yelled at him, asking what he was doing. Walked in on it? I couldn't just leave her alone, looking like she was about to cry, so I stuck around for a bit. She told me everything that happened in whispers. She probably figured I, I, she probably figured I wasn't the type to spread that stuff around. But she never asked for my help. She told me that she was fine and to keep it a secret. Michio, why? She probably thought she had to get. She probably thought she had to grit her teeth. She probably thought she had to grit her teeth till it was through. She was naive. I tried to tell her that if you give guys like that an inch, they'll take a mile. She kept saying about how it was her punishment. She was soft. No. Oh. Of course, Junochi didn't change. He kept on doing what he was doing. I don't understand either of them, but that's as much as I was involved. And then she killed herself. Nothing I can do about it now. You told me, if you knew about it, then why didn't you... You trying to say it's my fault? She told me not to say anything. She told me it's fine. So what the hell more... So what the hell more responsibility do I have other than the... Other than that? So what the hell more responsibility do I have other than what I already did? Yako, there's no point in blaming it to me. But you, why? Did you hear what this dirt was? Nope, never heard what it was. But from the sound of it, he'd been blackmailing her since about a year ago. For that long? The dick probably caught her doing something she shouldn't have been. She looked pretty well behaved, but there's more to a person than meets the eye, you know? There must be some reason. Dunno. Got nothing to do with me. So last night. How did it start? Alright. Remember that nosy cop I mentioned who was always on my case? He died at the former Yasuka Gardens a couple days ago. Yoshimi was his name. He was part of the juvenile division. He didn't look like a cop at all. Real rough guy, but good at looking out for folks. So he was the only one I could talk to. Huh. So there was someone like that with the police. Too bad he ended up dying. Oh, another thing. One time he suddenly introduced his fiance to me. It was hilarious seeing a big guy like that act like a shy little kid all of a sudden. She told me that she was like me when she was my age and that she was on my side. It must have been a terrible loss for her too. Yeah. I do feel a little bad for her when I think about how sad she must be. And I... I saw him at the gardens the night he died. Oh no. Whenever I would get worked up over something, Yoshimi always told me to go straight to that park. And he listened to whatever it was I was pissed off about. That day he called me over there like usual. But something seemed off about him. Like he was worried about something. Worried about something? Yeah. He asked me for a favor, too. That was pretty unusual. A favor? What kind of favor? He handed me a weird talisman and asked me to hold on to it for him. A talisman? Yeah, just a normal good luck charm. I figured if that's it, then sure I'll take it. I have it with me now. But that wasn't all. Then he told me that he wanted me to look for a talisman Michio Shiraishi had that looked like this one. Huh? Michio? What does she have to do with this? Yoshi- Yoshimi had me- Yoshimi had been meeting up and talking with her. While they were together, he noticed that she had a special talisman or something. But apparently Michio always avoided the subject. A talisman that Michio had- He knew that I knew her, so that's why he asked me, he said. Could there have been something that Michio couldn't tell even the police about? 
I knew things at home were a little complicated. From what I heard, Michio was keeping her mouth shut about what Jinuchi was doing to her. Hard to talk with the cops when someone's got dirt on you. And I didn't squeal on anything about Michio either. Michio, what is it that had such a strong grip on you? So basically, Yoshimi didn't have his eye on Michio, but her talisman too. But after she died, he didn't know where it ended up. So since I knew her from school, he wanted me to look into it for him. Is there something special about the two talismans? I wonder why he gave it to you. Hell if I know. When I looked inside it, there's just a weird kind of grimy scrap of wood. So you've seen inside it. But from the way he's acting, it seemed important to him somehow. But to be honest, when he was asking is such a pain in the ass, I figured he had to be serious about it. Oh, and since he died right after that. Yeah, he even said to me, if anything happens to me, take those two talismans. Give them to a guy named Nakagoshi at the police department. Knowing what I know now, he probably felt that something was going to happen to him. Hmm. Nakagoshi. Huh? Do you know him, Mio? No, I've just heard the name, I think. So there really is a Nagakoshi. That's a relief, at least. Anyway, it didn't feel right just ignoring a dead guy's last request. It told me. Yeah. That talisman. Would you mind if I had a look at it? Sorry. But I don't trust you all that much yet. It's important to me. Oh. Okay. So, last night you were looking for the talisman Michio had. Yeah. And I figured that piece of garbage teacher would know the mud. And I figured that piece of garbage teacher would know the most about Michio. I asked him yesterday afternoon if he knew anything about her talisman. He gave me some cryptic response like, I can't talk about it now. Come to the school tonight. He even gave me the code to the lock in the back entrance. He seemed pretty willing to give it out, so I wouldn't be surprised if he used it for secret meetings before. Yuck. I can only imagine. We climbed over the- We climbed over the front gate to get in. So yeah. We met up in the classroom in the middle of the night. But nothing he said made any sense. Like, that I was really Michio and stuff like that. He went on and on about how it was my fault and that if only I hadn't been around or something. He grabbed a hold of me, breathing heavily. Oh. Were you okay? Yeah. That's right when you two showed up. I was able to get away with- I was able to get away while Januki was freaking out. Oh my gosh. Good thing you got away. So it's really all thanks to you two that I got away. But I didn't get any info about the talisman, so the whole thing was sort of a bust. Afterward, I was worried- Afterward, I was wondering what you two were up to, so I hid nearby. Then I saw you and the old man Ashimiya talking, and then Mio showed up. Oh, you did? That's why I also saw Januki come back outside and bite. I see. So you were only here to look for Michio's talisman. I was dumb to fall for that creep Januki's trap so easy. It could have gone a lot worse, but I lucked out. What you described does sound like Michio killed Mr. Januki. She did have a reason to hate him, after all. No way. You mean that really was her ghost? Like, for real? Those who die bearing strong resentment or regret can occasionally become spirits, either bound to a place or roaming freely. However, it'd usually be impossible for them to kill the living. Most don't have that kind of power. But it's possible they could possess someone close to them to act on those lingering regrets. Huh. I wonder if that's what happened. Alright, then supposing what the spirit board said is true and Michio's death was an accident, then she must have had some regrets. If she really hadn't given up on living, that is. I don't think she was the kind of girl who would give up no matter what the situation. I don't really know, but she didn't seem like she had something tormenting her so much that she'd kill herself. 
Hmm. And that's all I know. Happy? I still gotta look for the talisman. Sure. Thank you, Hitomi. Oh, if you do- Oh, if you do find out anything about Michio's talisman, I'll be sure to let you know. Thanks. Oh, can we get your contact info? Where can we normally find you? Right. I'm not home most of the time. Usually I'm at a friend's place. Here's the phone number. Thanks. We'll call her if we need to talk with you. And, um, what is it? You're easier to talk to than I imagined. I was kind of scared at first, but not anymore. Shut up. You were the one avoiding me. Anyway, catch you later. And don't die out there, okay? Thanks. We'll be careful. Alright then. We got a lot of new information. Sounds like Mr. Janucci was killed by a curse, just as we thought. Which means there was a curse bear at the school. Multiple, in fact. Multiple? You think so? Yes. The curse that we experienced in the school and the one that killed Mr. Janucci seemed to be different. The people in the school at the time other than us were... Mr. Janucci, Hitomi, and old man Ashimaya, who you ran into. I was thinking it would be among them, but... But there was one more person. Hitomi saw a girl in a school uniform with braids. From what Hitomi was saying, it doesn't seem like she's the one. Mr. Janucci is pretty suspicious, though. If he were a curse bearer, it would certainly explain why he was killed. Right. That's why I say there are multiple. Oh, right. The person who killed Mr. Janucci would have been one, too. Which means it must be either the mysterious girl or old man Ashimiya. Yeah, we should certainly be careful of them. That said, the mysterious girl and the fact that Mr. Janucci thought it was Michio that was attacking him has me wondering. Of course I doubt Michio herself was actually there, but... Oh, I just remembered. I also saw Mr. Araishi outside the main gate last night. You did? It's likely he's involved with the curses given that he's the one doing research on the Rider Resurrection. So we'll have to be careful of old man Ashimiya and Mr. Araishi. I want to believe that not all curse bearers will be hostile, but... As for what to do now, I'd like to find out who is responsible for the Feast of Shadows that set this off and how they did it. I don't think we'll be able to end this without stopping it at its source. That makes sense. In which case, next we should do... What exactly? We'll need to talk with Mr. Araishi. He definitely knows something. It should be safer during the day, so I think we should try to look for him. Got it. I'll help in any way I can. But the school is closed. I wonder where he could be. Let's try heading someplace someone may know where he is. Huh. Well, where to go then? We can go a lot of places. Let's go to the candy shop. Oh wait, this is her home. I forgot. Yaku Sakazaki to 9 a.m. Sonoya. And so. Mio Kuro Suzo and Yako Karazaki decided on their next location to investigate. Yeah, okay, we'll put a pin in that for now. Back to the detectives. Sorting things out. Ajime Yoshimi's death, Najima's threat of mass murder, the problems just pile up, putting the detective's goal of collecting all the curse stones in jeopardy. Tsutsumi leaves Erio to handle the investigation while he catches a quick break. <laughs> Please taking a break, imagine. <laughs> Tetsuo Tsutsumi, 9 a.m. 
Kinshibori Park. Sorry for the wait, boss, but I managed to gather some information. Took you long enough. Things at the station were pretty hectic, but I managed to get some info. Let me fill you in. Thanks. The floor is yours. Wow, a lot. Okay, he does have a lot. A total of three mysterious deaths were conformed in the area, including the one in this park. So let's start with that one. The young man we found here... He's been identified as Shogo Ikie. Ikie. 25 years old, a regular old office worker who worked around here. He died of asphyxiation due to water in the lungs. He drowned. He drowned in the middle of the park. That's not possible. It's gotta be a curse we're dealing with here. About that, boss, isn't this park associated with one of the seven mysteries too? I don't know. Beckoning light. Huh? No, not that one. Wasn't it the Whispering Canal? That was my second guess. Alright. Yeah, that's the one. It does seem like there'd be a link between a canal and death by drowning, don't you think? Sure thinking, Eddie. You're starting to get a hang of this. So let's assume they're related. What's next? Before that, the body of a woman was found behind a residential complex in Kamezawa. The victim has been identified as Tawako Hayashi, 29 years old. She was an office worker who lived on her own in the area. And for the cause of death? Well... Yes. The entirety, the entirety of her body was crushed by some kind of strong external force. No murder weapon was discovered in the area, but considering the way she was found... We're looking for someone large, or someone. <laughs> We're looking for something large, flat, and heavy that could have crushed her in one fell swoop. Hang on. Are you saying she stepped on meaning? Exactly. Crushing is the foot washing mansion's modus operandi. The place the body was discovered is also known to be related to the Seven Mysteries. Then, is this Nami Gaki's doing? Shit. I knew he'd used it. Judging by the amount of soul dregs, the victim was just a regular person. Not a curse bear. Guess we should report this to the Paranormal Affairs. Mm, got it. And as for the third victim... He was identified as Kohei Januki. 32, a teacher at Kumagata High. He was found in the school's courtyard. Cause of death appears to be an external trauma from a fall or heavy blow. The impact crushed his arms and legs. Since he was found in the middle of the courtyard, he could not have fallen from the gymnasium or the main building. The teacher dying at school. Not just any school. Kumagata's house. Kumagata House is one of the seven mysteries. The Fool's Possession! Right! It's where the Fool's Possession is supposed to be! It's too big of a coincidence! We can't rule out the possibility that this death was also the work of a curse. I see. Either way, it all seems... I see. Either way, it seems all three victims can be tied to the Seven Mysteries. There's probably a curse bearer at the center of it, pulling the strings. But you got a point. All these strange deaths do point in one direction. That's right. And Hajime's case wasn't all that different either. He also died of mysterious causes in a place connected to the Seven Mysteries. Problem is that the timing doesn't match up. He died before the curses were activated. Hmm. Could he have been hit by a different curse? One that didn't have anything to do with the Seven Mysteries? Hmm. That's a thought, but... If that were the case, we'd be dealing with a powerful practitioner. One who could pull off a curse like that without using a curse stone. Hi, X Decision. Welcome in. Can we get some yo's? Hello. 
there aren't many people in this day and age who could do something like that. Oh, really? I see. I don't know too much about that stuff. I'd be more surprised if you did. Wait, I can move? Oh, I don't want to move. Easter egg. Another sticker. Mockingbird number 16. Dude, how much is it gonna lore dump? Well, looking at these deaths, it seems like many of the curse bearers acted last night. But we can't rule out there were more killings from which the bodies haven't been found. Yes, I hadn't thought of that. But there is one silver lining. Judging by my own curse stone, it seems that the curses can't be activated while the sun's out. Oh, that's great news. So basically, we're safe during the daytime. Exactly. It's also likely why Nijima gave us till dusk. Ah, he must have known the curse stones couldn't be used during the day. Either way, we got till nightfall to settle this. It's time we fleshed out the other cursed bears. Aye, aye, boss. Let's do this. At the moment, we only know the identity of four curse bears, you included. Yutaro Namigaki has the foot-washing mansion, and Hideki Araishi has the ever-burning lantern. We've got both of their curse stones. And then there's Nijima, who claims he has the one-sided reed. Yeah, that about sums it up. We'd better figure out who the remaining five are quick. How should we go about looking for them? There's no point in searching blindly without a lead. Let's focus on other things for now. Tracking down Najima may lead us to the other curse bearers, too. Either way, he should be our top priority. He could do some real damage if we don't get him. I also want to look more into Yoshimi. I've got a feeling there's some connection there. Aye, aye, boss. Sounds like we've got our work cut out for us. I've asked around Shumita's Community Safety Bureau, where Yoshimi was stationed. It seems like he was investigating the apparent suicide of a girl named Michio Shiraishi. Oh yeah, I heard about that. He was trying to determine whether it really... He was trying to determine whether it really was a suicide. Looking into the height of the building, the force of the impact, her wounds, all that. He must have suspected some kind of foul play, as he ordered a full investigation. But it had already been deemed a suicide, and his superiors told him not to go stirring things up. Hmm. What was the evidence? Well, according to the report I found in his desk last night. The body was found at the foot of a building, a ways away from the road. There was no evidence of vehicular collision, so it was a suicide, but... But he thought there was more of it. Yes, a truck or other flat-faced vehicle traveling at high speeds could have inflicted similar damage. In other words, sometimes a traffic accident can look an awful lot like a fall. So there was a chance that it wasn't a suicide. But what a terrible way to go. There was no brake marks on the road, meaning it would have been a hit and run. The vehicle would have hit her without slowing down at all. This is turning into quite the grisly case. But the vehicle couldn't have come out from a collision like that unscathed. Exactly. So I asked the traffic bureau to keep an eye out for any vehicles with frontal damage. But I haven't been back for them yet. I don't think they're looking very hard. <laughs> yeah, because they're defunding the police. You should know that, Ariel. So, we've got no proof. That said, it was- if it- <clears throat> That said, if it was a traffic accident rather than a suicide, it's possible that someone silenced Yoshimi because he was on the verge of discovering the truth. That's true. You think the driver is one of the You think the driver is the one who did him in? Not quite. Yoshimi had already talked to forensics in the traffic bureau, right? His death wouldn't have been Not quite. Yoshimi had already talked to forensics in the traffic bureau, right? His death wouldn't have covered things up. You're right on that. Even if the suicide was a cover-up for a hit-and-run, it doesn't seem like enough reason to kill a cop. Hmm. 
Oh, that's ooh, right. Unrelated, but I got something else, too. I managed to get a hold of Michio Shiraishi's address. Yoshima went there a bunch over the course of an but Yoshimi went up. <laughs> Yoshimi went there a bunch over the course of his investigation. Might be a good idea for us to drop by too. Good thinking. Hopefully that'll give us some more leads. All right, let's move on to the next topic. HQ has mobilized a search unit for Najima, but so far we haven't received any word. Guessing it wasn't home or at work. About that, apparently he vacated his last known address a week ago. He's serious. So we have no idea where he lives. It gets worse. I checked in with the factory he was working at. They told me he was only there a month before he quit. Hold on a second. You're telling me nobody caught that. Well, I had the same thought, so I spoke to his probation officer. Turns out he'd been doing house visits and interviews, but he never bothered checking on his workplace. He also said he lost track of Najima when he moved to a new place. Jeez. That's just sloppy. I heard that they're giving parole to just about anybody these days because they're running out of room in the prisons. Which also means there aren't enough probation officers to go around. Who's probably overworked. So Najima got to fuck about unsupervised. God damn it. That asshole is annoyingly good at faking remorse or insanity. Whatever the situation calls for. Back when I arrested him all those years ago, just talking to him left a bad taste in my mouth. He's probably hiding under a false name, which will make it hard to track him down. That explains why he so brazenly made contact. That asshole. He's mocking us. Well, for now, the paperwork to circulate his name and mugshot is being filed. That's gonna take way too long. We have until dusk. Remember the girl Yoshimi met with the day he died? One Hitomi Okuda? Community safety didn't have any contact information for her on hand. Not even an address. Well, they had her parents' information, but when I called, they said they'd had heard from her in a month. Lots of family issues, from the sound of it. They even said they didn't want anything to do with her anymore. That said, she still goes to school once in a while, so we might be able to find her there. Not sure we really have time for a stakeout right now, but she could be a key witness. Can we have community safety track her down for us? Who we can ask, but it might be tricky to get it done today. For starters, Kumagata High School is closed today. Oh, uh, because of the teacher that died. And that's right. Alright. But if it's not something we could do today, we might have to forget about it. Let's move on then. I got some information about Yoshimi's fiance from Community Safety. Her name is Mayu. Shizawa, 27 years old. She works as a beautician in the area. Look, I even managed to get a picture of her. She sure is a beauty. But... Oh boy, here it comes. But what? Community safety has been able to contact her since Yoshimi died. Not by phone or at her house. In other words, no response. Dead silence. There it is. Can't things just be easy for once? It's definitely starting to look suspect. A crime of passion, perhaps. Um, It is fairly common for people to be killed by a lover or a spouse. But Yoshimu is well-liked and they've been together for over ten years. You never know. Things could be different behind closed doors. I guess so. But we'll have to consider the opposite scenario, too. It could be that the same person who was out for Yoshimi is after his fiancée as well. She could be in danger. You're right. By the way, she is important to the case. HQ has already had people looking out for her. We'll know as soon as she's found. Speaking of Nejima. Yeah? Did you manage to reach your daughter? It'd be best to put her into protective custody as soon as possible. Not yet. I can't reach her. 
They called, but she's not picking up. Wasn't home when they went to the house, either. Hmm, that's not good. Does that mean she never came home? Then why weren't you the one trying to reach her? Shut up. I don't have her contact info, alright? Damn, she really doesn't trust you, huh? Either way, I told her mother that it was an emergency and that we'd send an officer to find her and get her to safety. She was real reluctant, but I got her to agree. I guess that explains why you got divorced. <laughs> Dude, Eddie was just a drama farmer. Oh my god. I love him. But if you, her former father, can't find her, how the hell did Nijima do it? Former, eh? That cuts deep. Yikes, sorry. It just kind of slipped out. Anyway, I suspect it has something to do with this curse echo. Back on topic already, huh? He said his curse could kill a lot of people in a short time. It may even allow him to act from a distance. I see. The one-sided read. What was that story about again? Something about a man stalking a woman who goes insane and chucks her up. All right. One of the more gruesome of the seven mysteries. As for Najima's whereabouts, all we can do is throw more people at it until we find something. I'll check with 8Q frequently to see if they've got any more updates. And that's about it. Shall we continue our investigation? We could go to Komaga High School to look into Hitomi Okuda or to Michio Shiraishi's house to find out more about her. Forensics has finished their investigation and the body's been carried away. That said, we're still close to the park to the public, at least for the time being. This place was really giving me the creeps last night, but it looks pretty normal now with the sun out. Why is the music so happy? I don't like this. You know what? They can at least try to clean up the park. Is that litter? Let's move out. Guess we won't move out. <laughs> Ooh, fancy sushi. With dusk fast approaching, they have no time to waste. With that in mind, Tsutsumi and Erio direct their investigation toward Komagata High and the Shiraishi residence. Finally, some drama, some juice. Go to the neighborhood first. Tetsuo Tsutsumi, 9 a.m. Near the Shiraishi household. It seems like Michio's house is at the end of this road. We don't want to intimidate them, so maybe I should go alone. I'm obviously more nice than you, Tsutsumi. <laughs> the houses are really cramped together in these narrow alleyways. Strangers like us walking through definitely stand out. It really feels like old Tokyo. Whoa. Easter egg. Mockingbird number six. It's quiet. This place is normally pretty lively, full of people coming and going. But it seems like everyone's decided to stay inside because of the recent incidents. Heck, I would too. I don't like going outside. Eddie was checking the Shiraishi house at the end of the road. The street's real narrow, so two big guys like us would stick out like a pair of sore thumbs. Alright, I'll go check out the house. Adios off checking the shit I see house, so I'll just wait till he gets back. Oh. Well, that was 
quick. <laughs> oh, you're back. No luck, boss. No one home. Doesn't look like it. I knocked for a while, but nobody came to the door. I glanced in the windows, but there was no sign of activity inside either. And I saw about three of sweepers stuffed into their mailbox. Hmm. So that means they got out of town. Looks like no one's home right now. Let's try again later. To the school. Tetsuo Sutsumi, 9 a.m. Komagata High School. Here we are, Komagata High. The lessons are suspended for the day, so the students are just wandering around aimlessly. The news of the dead teacher have also attracted a fair share of rubberneckers. What is that? What does that mean? The atmosphere is kind of tense with this many cops around. Kumagata High's gymnasium also serves as a polling place and evacuation center. A lot of the buildings around here are still made of wood, but this place looks safe and sturdy. The school gate will stay locked while forensics inspects the scene of the incident. Looks like they're still busy. Let's talk to the person in charge later. Yoshimi also looked out for these students as a Sumida city officer. Juvenile delinquency has been growing up. Juvenile delinquency has been a growing problem for years now. This school is no exception. Are we supposed to be looking for the girl? to everyone this place isn't only connected to the case because the students were under Yoshimi's jurisdiction it's also the site of the fool's possession and of course for that teacher was killed seems like a likely place to find some clues don't you think I guess I'll think ideally we could talk to someone who was involved in the incident easier said than done though yeah, there's nothing here! Yeah, nothing else here. Let's get back on the move. Tetsuo Sutsumi, 9 a.m. Near the Shiraishi household. I checked everything here! Do I gotta go back to the school again? Okay, because earlier it didn't have the check mark by the household, so they're just not home. I'll think. Not much we can do if they're not home. Let's go somewhere else for now. Back to the school, everybody! Yep, nowhere else I can go, only back to school. Tetsuo Sutsumi, 9 a.m. Man, we walk pretty fast, huh? Bumagata High School. Am I DOM? I might be DOM.
Yeah, I can't click on nothing else. Oh, I just gotta keep yapping with Eddie though. Okay. Makes sense. <clears throat> Alright, speaking of schools... What is it? You said paranormal affairs can't help us right now. So why don't we get that psychic high schooler you mentioned to help us? A lot of the people involved in this case lead back to the school anyway, so it might make things easier to have them with us. For a guy who questioned me on the legality of working with them, he sure seemed eager to exploit underage labor. Hey, who said anything about exploiting them? I just want to give our young experts the opportunity to shine. When'd you become such a smooth talker? Anyway, I'm afraid I don't know where they are. Oh, I see. I wonder if there's anybody who could help us scout out the area. Do they not have, like, cell phones yet? I wonder if there's anyone who can help us scout out the area. Oh, suspend means I've a I've exhausted either doll like and I have to play a different POV. Okay, so we're stuck here. Tommy's help. If we go to the school, maybe we'll run into the cops. Yoko Sakazaki, 9 a.m. Komagata High School. And so, Mio Kurosuzu and Yoko Sakazaki decided on their next location to investigate. I guess I'm still locked there too. Back to the detective. Life can be tough. Throughout the night, Richard continues to gather information about the curse stones, while Hadaway lies awake until dawn, preoccupied by the prospect of bringing her lost child back to life. Hadaway Shigima, not. 10 a.m. <laughs> now I'm switching up the numbers. <laughs> Shigima Mansion. Good morning, ma'am. How you feeling? Hmm, I'm fine. I hope we can make good progress today. How's your curse stone looking? I haven't felt anything from it since sunrise. Interesting. It's possible that his powers can only be unleashed at night, then. That aside, why are you so late this morning? There are unfortunately some things that can't be investigated while the world slumbers. But I did get some research done in what limited time I had. Very well, let's talk. The town is beginning to wake up once more. The clamor of society can be heard from beyond the garden gates. Like any day, a cloud of pollution drifts out from the industrial area. This is the old mansion where I was born and raised. By the way, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. And what's that? Our current plan is to steal a cursed stone that's already absorbed soul drags, but... I'm wondering if it would suffice to not steal, but it's to negotiate with a curse bearer and have them use the right for our purposes. Oh. I mean, I suppose that would accomplish the same, but do you think it's possible? So long as we offer... So long as we offer compensation, it may prove much easier than you'd expect. Compensation. 
cash, for instance. That wouldn't be off the table for a family as rich as the Shigimas, would it? Of course. Why, any amount would be fine if it'll get the job done. I won't let monetary matters lead me to regrets the way I did back with the ransom. Okay. With that op Okay. With that option on the table, let's figure out our strategy. Do you have a curse bearer with whom we can negotiate in mind? Not yet. Surprisingly, it seems that the curse bearers haven't been that proactive about collecting soul dregs. Did you see the news this morning? No, I haven't. Overnight, three mysterious deaths were reported in this area. They have yet to announce the identities of the bodies found. But they have been nicknamed the Honjo Serial Killings. It's garnered quite some attention on the streets. Oh my. Only three. That's what I thought. Even if the victims were curse bearers, just two... Even if the victims weren't curse bearers, just one or two wouldn't be enough soul drags. And for what those curse stones are capable of, a mere three victims seems a little on the low side. With this actively all through the night, the curse bearers must be a cautious bunch. What's holding them back? Are we not all after the power of resurrection? There may still be some undiscovered victims, and it doesn't seem like anyone has gathered enough soul drugs yet. We might have to set up some bait to spur them into action. And then we offer them the deal. None of the curse bearers seem very proactive. I wonder if this situation could be what the mastermind who kicked it off intended. Now that's an interesting theory. You think there's someone behind all this? You mentioned hearing an agonized voice telling you to kill when you first obtained the cursed stone. That doesn't sound like a coincidence to me. Someone agitated the curses in the, someone agitated the curses in this area on purpose. They are likely after the Rat of Resurrection as well. So you're thinking this person is not one of the curse bearers? You've got a sharp mind, ma'am. Though it might seem obvious for the Mastermind to become a curse bearer and collect soul drags if they were after the right. This would be very risky, since as a curse bearer they themselves would become a target. So, it'd actually be more convenient for them if the curse bearers moved less aggressively. That's right. But despite that, they've been enticing. But... <laughs> That's right. But despite that... They've been inciting the curse bearers to commit murders. Why? Let's consider this. What if the Mastermind isn't trying to collect soul drags themselves? You mean their intention was also to steal the souls while the other curse bearers compete with each other from the start? Sitting back and observing from the sidelines is a safer course of action. Which is why I figured it best for us to attempt the same strategy. So how should we do it? There's still reason to suspect the Mastermind could be a curse bearer themselves. To be honest, I want to keep my distance from whoever it is. There's no telling what kind of power they might possess. Whether I aim is to negotiate or steal, we'd have to outpace the Mastermind in making contact with the other curse bearers. How do you suppose we do so? At this point, all we can do is search. If there's a mastermind inside in the curse bearers to collect soul drags, can we be sure there even is a right of resurrection? Good question. Oops, I skipped it. <laughs> Thing it might be for naught. Do you want to give up, ma'am? Huh? Never. Understood. After all, we'll never know the truth until we see it for ourselves. But we'll do it without using the curses ourselves. By the way, I met a few people who seemed like potential curse bearers last night. I did some investigating into all of them. But I only managed to get detailed information on two. You're quick. I suppose that's to be expected from an investigator extraordinaire. I appreciate the flattery. First, there's Ayomi Tono, the girl we talked to before. Though she isn't a curse bearer herself. 
She is a student attending T University of Art. She is currently living alone in an apartment near Moro. Moro. She is a student attending T University of Art. She currently lives alone in an apartment near Mido Midochu. Midochu. She's a student attending T University of Art. She currently lives alone in an apartment near Mirochi. Mirochi. Mid. Mirochi. 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 She's a student attending T University of Art. She currently lives alone in an apartment near Mirochi. I can't do it. Mirochi. 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 She's a student attending T University of Art. She currently lives alone in an apartment near Mirorecho Park. You even determined her address. You're not one to be underestimated, Mr. Investigator Extraordinaire. I called every single university with EOKA in the curriculum pretending to be our parent. I went around to check on her place on the way here. It doesn't seem like she returned home last night. I'm worried she might have run into some trouble. Didn't you attempt to follow her last night? I'm embarrassed to say, but I couldn't. She shook me. I couldn't keep track of her. And here I thought you were investigator extraordinaire. I'd like to learn more about her, but it would take some time. She is planning to steal the cursed stones, just like us. It's best we act carefully around her. <clears throat> Next is the tall man who dressed in black. I met him near Kinshiko. He stood out the way with the I met him near Kinshiko. He stood out with the way he dressed and managed to get some good information from him. Impressive. What can I say? He works as the secretary to Hihakocho. He works as the secretary to Hiha. He works as the secretary to Hihaku Soap's chairwoman. I believe his name is Takumi Yumioka. The Hihaku Soap's headquarters and factories are both located in Honjo, correct? Yes, they have been here for a while. But it's only in the past years... Yes, they have been here for a while. But it's only in the past ten years that the company has shown significant growth. I remember seeing the chairwoman on the news a few years back. She seemed to be very shrewd. With the increase in sales, I assume she'd want her factories running at full capacity. But with the harsh restrictions against industrial waste, a lot of the factories with older equipment have had to be shut down. That's right. Even ten years ago, there were many complaints about chemical plants dumping waste into the river. Most companies back then were more concerned with making a profit than protecting the environment. Capitalism? More like capitalism, am I right? <laughs> I wonder what a man working for such a company would have been up to in the middle of the night. On the way here, I stopped by the company's headquarters, but they hadn't started for the day. I should have better luck later. Let's hope you will. Perhaps they're interested in seeing if the right would be beneficial for their product research into beauty and skincare. Ha! Huh. Now that's an interesting thought. I ran into one more suspicious young man last night. This one seemed to be out collecting soul dregs, right? Indeed, I couldn't get a good look at him though, and I couldn't gather enough intel to properly identify him. Well, that's a shame. But I can make an educated guess. Oh? You know that researcher who discovered the ancient text on the Rite of Resurrection? The one that lives near here. His name is Hiraiki. Hiraishi. His name is Hira Hiraki. Hiraki. His name is Hira His name is Hiraki Araishi, and the man I met was very similar in stature. Oh my. Even he is involved. How awfully suspect. Considering his background, couldn't he be the one who initiated the whole affair? I think it's possible, yes. Which is why I decided to refrain from making contact with him for the time being. Safety first. Understandable. Of course I want to learn more, but this isn't the right time to focus on him. I 
I prefer to ascertain who else is a curse bearer. First, I'll return to hit. I prefer to ascertain who else is a curse bearer. First, I'll return to Hihaku Soaps to see that man in black. Their headquarters was down on South what I Wari Gesui. Wait, Wari Gesui. Sui, Sui. Their headquarters are down on South Wari Gesui Street. I learned something new about the criminal involved with the kidnapping. It concerns the serial killings. There was a body found at Komagata High School. The person was identified as a school teacher. His name was Kohei Junuchi. Mm hmm. Do you think he was a curse bearer? Not sure. It's possible. But regardless, this means the two people who knew the truth about the kidnapping are both dead. Huh. Just when we were getting somewhere. It isn't enough to make me give up, of course. Still, we don't know anything about Machio Shiraishi's residence. It'd be wise to pay a visit. Understood. In addition to the three victims associated with the Honjo serial killings, there is Machio Shiraishi, who reportedly committed suicide, and the police officer who died at the former Yasuda Gardens. If strange deaths continue occurring like so, they're bound to inspire strange rumors. But those last two have nothing to do with the Seven Mysteries, no? It's true. Both occurred a week before this accursed situation began. Still, it cannot be ruled out. It's possible that the Mastermind was involved even with those killings. How? What if there were preliminary steps to awakening the Seven Mysteries' curses? Can we really assume they're unrelated just because the timing doesn't match up? Or rather, the police officer's death is so baffling that it'd be easier if it were connected to these curses. The victim wasn't the type to be caught off guard easily. You seem to know a lot about this. I suppose we weren't strangers. My personal feelings might be wrapped up in this one too. I see. If you were to investigate this matter more, you might get a lead on the mastermind. You're right. If we wish to focus on the Mastermind's identity, this would be a fine starting point. You know what else it is a good point for? An ad break. Because guys, we are three hours into stream, and my voice is dying. It's dying. I need a, I need a two-minute break. So, if you want to avoid that ad, all you must do is subscribe for four ninety nine, just five dollars. Keep your coffee and get ad free viewing on Mothong. Or, you can link your Prime to your Twitch and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe, see if you got a sub available. You're doing the the detective's voice. I don't like it. It's I, I'm not making it as gravelly as I should, but it's still very difficult. It sounds like I have a frog in my throat. Let's see, it's two o'clock. Did I just walk into a Michael Jackson game? <laughs> they, this guy, you're so right. It's literally him. But hi, Luigi. Can we get some yo's? Hello. Also, this game is scary. Hello. I don't know if you watched me play this, but I played this back in October. And I'm like halfway through the game. But the lore is actually crazy. Discover more deaths related to the curses on the way. We should pay attention to today's news. Well, that's all I have to report. Shall we continue with our investigation? What do you want to do? If you still can't use the curse stone, taking a walk should be a fine place to start. Right. Let's go together. I want to see what's going on for myself. In that case, I trust you to decide on where we should go, man. 
Let's go on the move. Let's go to the school because everybody's going to school. Come on, go to high school. Front gates. Here we are, ground zero. Komagata High School. I guess it's logical that the police got this place shut down. The teacher's body was found here after all. It's as if the students have nowhere to go now that the school's closed. It seems the officers are still inspecting the scene. Entry has been strictly prohibited. The news have attracted a bunch of curious onlookers, huh? That works in our favor. The more people around, the better we can blend in. So there's only like two people. <laughs> it's total? Nothing else here? This place is said to be connected with the story of the fool's possession. I wouldn't be surprised if a curse bearer decided to turn up. However, I need to find out if that teacher was a curse bearer or not. I expect the police to be baffled, since they don't know about the curses. I can ask around and see what the students have to say. Ooh, inquire, yes sir. Alright, I'll go ask the students about Machio. I'm back, ma'am. So, what did you learn? That school kids sure love a good rumor. I was practically drowning in stories about Mr. Janoki and Michio, most of which seemed dubious at best. Not surprising. Most of what I heard was hardly worth a second thought, but there was one story that caught my attention. Oh. Some believe that Michio was the one who killed Mr. Janoki. Really? The story's got two pieces of evidence to back it up. One of them wasn't news to me. Apparently he's been mumbling that Machio was going to kill him for some days now. A fellow teacher overheard his mumbling and told the students. And then it spread like wildfire, I suppose. Rumors that Juicy don't stay a secret for long. As for the other piece of evidence, a pigtailed girl in her school uniform was seen around school late last night. Go on. Although numerous people claimed to have seen the girl, not one of them saw her face. Some are proposing it was Machio brought back to life, or that was her vengeful spirit. But it's not like Machio is the only high school girl to wear pigtails. This rumor might have been made up just to fan the flames. Huh. But if it were true, I'd want to get a hold of her in order to hear her side of the kidnapping. If she is alive, that'd be ideal. There's still one more thing I should mention. I discovered where Michio lived. A student had a list of student addresses on hand. Well, you just give it- Dude, they're doxing their classmates to a stranger. That looks like Michael Jackson. What is going on? He doesn't look like a cop. That's an amazing find. I believe all the students actually have a copy of said list. It truly worries me how easy it is to obtain what should be confidential information. Exactly! Imagine what would happen if that information got into the wrong hands. Well, so far it hasn't, no? Sure. Let's hope it stays that way. In the meantime, it's not possible for us to visit Michio Shiraishi's house. Ooh, let's go to the house. How can we talk to him? I can imagine the students are uneasy after learning of the murders. It may do them well to stay home for some time, if not for fear of their safety. The police are probably too wrapped up in solving the case to be concerned about the students' mental health. I can see that. Dude, real. It's important that society provides a safe environment for the benefit of our youth. Some school policies could use some rewriting, especially those handling the students' personal information. That's right. I don't want a student being kidnapped on their way back home ever again. I expect criminals to grow more cunning as time passes. 
there may be times where the authorities can't keep up. That's where outliers such as... <laughs> outliers. <laughs> That's why outliers such as myself come in. What's this about? Uh, actually, just, just forget I said anything. Is he the mass murderer? From ten years ago? We don't know what the previous murderer looks like, I don't think. Hmm. Let's go on the move. Near the Shiraishi household. How did it go? I went to visit Michio Shiraishi's family home, however, no one seemed to be there. I got no answer at the door and all the lights were out. It seems to have been empty for a while, though. There were a stack of newspapers out front. Huh. It's a bit quieter over here. It is a residential area, after all. All these run-down row houses really scream working class, don't they? <laughs> Such a jackass. <laughs> I'm gonna think. I don't understand why no one's coming to this house, even after Michio committed suicide. I wonder if this place is... okay. It's haunted! Social connections run deep in working class areas like this place, so I decided to talk to the locals. I met a few nice old ladies who were kind enough to give me the scoop. Turns out the Shiraishi's reputation really went down the dumps this past year. Is that so? Wait, there's somebody behind her! I'll give you the quick summary. They moved here about three years ago. Their previous residence was in a better part of town. Michio's father died in a car accident, leaving behind just the two of them. Michio's mom, Toshiko, now a single mother, relocated here. At first, they got along with their neighbors, many of which were in similar situations, helping and being helped in turn. So far, so good. What happened? Well, as I said, their reputation began to go downhill about a year ago. A man recognized as Toshiko's common-law husband had moved into the household. His name is apparently Han... Konkichiro. Konkichiro. His name was apparently Konkichiro Iwai. Neighborhood gossip is something else. Somehow everyone knew his name. So what of this Iwai character? He was apparently a vulgar fellow with a criminal record. He was prone to violent outbursts. The neighbors often heard screams and shoutings coming from the home. The neighbors took particular notice of Tochiko's screams pleading with him to not hit Michio. That's terrible. As if that wasn't unsettling enough, every night the neighbors also began to hear an eerie chanting. They were doing ritualistic shit. Through this, the Shiraishi standing in the neighborhood plummeted rapidly. Toshika was often seen covered in bruises and wounds. She stopped responding to her neighbors. She would just turn the other way when greeted. They kept their storm shutters closed even during the day and effectively shut themselves away from the entire community. That sounds horrible. Why didn't the police stop in and do something? Stop in, step in. Where's the house? It looks like a mini shopping district. Look up Japanese infrastructure. It's really cool. A lot of their cities are super condensed. And more often than not, a lot of the cities are super walkable. So, like, you'll have shops right next to, like, the downtown spread. And it's really cool. And it's really... Just look it up. It's cool. Or do, like, POV driving through Japan. They have, like, really skinny one-lane roads. I would love... No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't love to live in Japan. There's, They don't like foreigners. <laughs> my sister, when she went last year, she, my sister and I were Asian Hispanic. We're both half. And my sister looks more Japanese than I do. So when she went on her trip last year, she had 
Japanese locals asking which prefecture she's from. Prefecture is kind of like how here we have states. She, they thought she was like, like a citizen. <laughs> it was so funny. <clears throat> that sounds horrible. Why didn't the police step in and do something? Unfortunately, under any current laws, the police aren't allowed to get involved with domestic disputes. That's awful. And the Machio reportedly killed herself. Things only got worse with Iwai, and Toshika was admitted to the hospital for physical and mental abuse. Ever since, Iwai hasn't returned to home. Many locals expressed sympathy for Machio's circumstances, but... Just as many were fed up with the shit she's entirely, and seemed relieved that things finally quieted down again. It seems that they still considered outliers even after three years of living here. I don't understand it. Why would Toshiko have gotten involved with such a brutish good-for-nothing in the first place? I've heard many stories where one's partner personally... I've heard many stories where one's partner's personality does a complete turn after entering a relationship. After her first husband's death, Toshiko's financial situation had also taken a turn for the worse. She was also determined to send her daughter to a good high school. It's possible she fell victim to sweet promises. Life can be tough, I suppose. Dude, Hadley is like so sheltered. It's frustrating. You don't seem to be moved by the story, man. That's fine. People have all kinds of stories. But the Shirai she certainly hadn't looked out with theirs, bringing such a violent man into it. I think I've seen everything here. Let's go to South Warigesui Street. <clears throat> South Warigesui Street. The Hihako Soap's headquarters are on the other side of South Warigesui Street. They were closed when I visited this morning, but it appears things are up and running now. To think a small soap-making company could grow so much in such a short time. They have factories and warehouses throughout the area now. You can see why director and now chairwoman, Natsue Yamamori, is called the queen. You mentioned that Takumi works as her secretary. That's correct. Do you think it's possible he's acting on her orders? That's exactly my thinking. A curse bearer with both money and power could certainly look at resurrection as their next prize. Negotiating with a person of that stature may prove difficult. Business is up and running. I can see people inside the reception area. Back in the Edo period, the canal known as South Warigesui ran through this area, but it's been turned into a major road. It's a bit away from Kinshiko Station or Ryogoku Station, though it's still considered a nice area. The stories of the ever burning lantern and the Fushimashi. <laughs> Fushimashi. <laughs> the stories of the ever burning lantern and the foot washing mansion both took place around here. One of the bodies discovered this morning was found by this road as well. This is quite a lively area, huh? I suppose you could call it somewhat of a city center. Not much here, it seems. First, I need to confirm whether Takumi is the man I ran into last night. Then I'll be able to determine if he's a curse bearer. It'll be better if I go inside the headquarters alone. You should walk around. Visit a cafe for some tea, perhaps. I'm gonna go in. I may be a while, so feel... F I'm going to go in. I may be a while, so feel... So feel to find somewhere. Be what? I don't think that's proper English. 
I'm going to go in. That may be a while, so feel to find somewhere to kill time. Okay. Good luck in there. Sorry to keep you waiting. How did it go? I'll fast forward to the conclusion. I met with Takumi. There's no doubt he's the same man I saw last night. But it doesn't seem like he's a curse bearer. Mm hmm But that doesn't mean he has no connections to the recent curses. He knew about the seven mysteries. He even guessed we had a curse stone of our own. Excuse me? I tried to approach Takumi about a fallen item after I ran into him last night. However... You said your name was Richard, correct? I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. I'm hoping you would hand over the curse stone in your possession. Curse stone? What are you on about? There's no need to play dumb with me. In fact, there's no time for it. I had all the same reason you did to think you were a curse bearer last night. And your arrival here only confirms it. You are a curse bearer, no? You're right. We lack time. I'll confess, I am a curse bearer. I possess the curse stone of the haunting clappers. I'm glad to hear the truth. Finally, this conversation is worthwhile. It is a dangerous item you hold. Give it to me. My company will take the responsibility to dispose of it. I didn't know the soap business specialized in scrubbing curses clean. It's the prerogative of Miss Yamamori. Is that so? Assuming you've obtained the curse, you understand the power it involves, no? Miss Yamamori possesses supernatural powers, akin to those of a god. She also has a deep love for this land, having transformed it from the pile of dirt it once was to the home of our headquarters. She cannot stomach the fact that it's now the site of these curses run rampant. So, you're telling me the Queen of Ihaku is a real-life witch? She wouldn't appreciate being called that, mind you. There's a sorcerer by the name of Sugen Gamayodo, who's gallantly working behind the scenes, exercising spirits and the like. Go on. That being so, there have already been instances of the dead coming back to life. Do you understand the urgency of this matter? These are curses we're speaking of, tools of which are used by wicked beings to possess. These are curses we're speaking of tools which are used by wicked beings to possess pervet, to possess people. <laughs> the right of resurrection is nothing but a fabrication meant to seduce the curse bearers into unspeakable action. If you truly understand what I'm talking about, you must hand over that curse stone at once. Very interesting. Well, that said, just how many curse stones have you acquired so far? If you were to tell me it's true, surely the company would have launched a large-scale search by now. Got him. We have six. You're lying. Six? <laughs> I can rest at ease then. And here I thought I was at risk of being cursed. It seems we are on the same page. If that is the case, you should hand over your curse stone immediately. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it's not actually my possession at the moment. Considering its importance, I've been kept it. Considering its importance, I've been keeping it in hiding. Really now. Then I'll accompany then I'll accompany you to while you, then I'll accompany you while you retrieve it. I'm sorry, but I've got something important to attend to, but I promise I'll return it. But I promise I'll return with it later. Very well. Then you won't refuse to provide your address and telephone number, I presume? How prudent of you. I'll oblige. And that's how it went. Mm-hmm. So, they aren't after the rights after all. I wouldn't be so quick to trust him. Oh. I believe we're dealing with a master in deception. He may well have made up a story to convince us to part ways with our stone. I think he was lying about having procured six cursed stones as well. Like, really, six? That's excessive. Well, now I feel gullible. The company is plotting something. I wonder what they mean to do with the curse stones. He seemed rather desperate to get a hold of ours. 
despite it not... He seemed rather desperate to get a hold of ours, despite us not having collected any soul dregs. Perhaps the people of Hihaku are the most... Perhaps the people of Hihaku are the masterminds behind the curses being unleashed. Because the chairwoman's a witch. I wonder about that too. If she really were that powerful, would her secretary have divulged that information so casually? Takumi was either making it up as he went, or... Or... He's trying to spread a rumor. For what purpose would he do that? Recently, people have been caught up about the occult more than ever before. If word spreads that Haku... Recently, people have been caught up about the occult more than ever before. If word spreads that Hiyaku's chairwoman has godlike powers, she could very well benefit socially and politically from that mystique. Hmm. That's unsettling. By the way, there's one more thing of interest I heard while in the company's reception lobby. And what's that? People were discussing whether one of the bodies found this morning was that of a Hihaku employee. Really? So long as the officials haven't revealed the identity, it's all amounts to no more than speculation, though. Despite that, I've reason to believe Hiyaku's soaps is deeply involved with the Seven Mysteries. At the very least, I can assure you have gathered that much. The more we know, the better our negotiations will go. In the meantime, we should be off somewhere else. There's no reason to stick around here any longer. We should avoid Hihaku for the time being. It'll be a pain to have to deal with Takumi again. Let's go on the move. Mirorichou Park. We're here. This is Mirorichou Park. Ayumi Tono lives around here. She wasn't in her apartment when I dropped by this morning. I wonder if it's worth checking again. This place is connected with the story of the Taiko of Sugari. This place is connected with the story of the Taiko of Sugari. Not only that, Katsushika Hokusai's home was also in this area. That might be why Ayami chose to live here. Not much here. We won't get much done standing around here. Why don't I go and check out Ayame's apartment? You don't mean to speak with her, do you? No, I'd prefer to get an idea of what she'd been up to. I'd like to see whether she's been home or not, just to potentially get a trace of her movements. Then, be my guest. Okay, I shouldn't be long. I'm back, ma'am. So, nothing. I'm afraid so. She still hasn't returned. However... However... I noticed a few people who seem to be related to the police force keeping watch in the area. I don't know if they got eyes in our apartment, but they do appear to be watching the building it's in. Interesting. You've got a sharp eye to have noticed them despite them being so covert. What can I say? It's part of the job. However, it meant I had to refrain from knocking on her door or looking through her windows. I wasn't able to check her electric meter or mailbox either, unfortunately. You were planning to go that far. There's a stranger here now. Okay, there's several people in the park. It's not just the one guy. We won't make much progress. We won't make much progress sticking around here. Let's go on the move. Okay, there's not many places I can go. <laughs> Kumagata High School, front gates.
This is Komagata High School. I guess there haven't been many developments. I'm gonna think. They're all dressed up for school. In another world, I might have had the chance to see my son in uniform, too. All you think about is your son. Like, come on. I doubt anyone's still living there. Hmm? Oh, so you came here too. Huh? What is it? Yo! Finally, the crossover. <clears throat> huh. Could you repeat what you know one more time for me, Richard? Is he like an ex cop? That is so mean to end it off like that. I'm going back to the detective field. -y. Wait, it reset. Dang it! Here we are! Come on, to high! The girls are here. Huh? That's... Boss, who is it? You want to talk to those girls? I... Yes, I do! Yeah, I do. This is divine intervention. We were brought here for a reason. Come on, Edio. Huh? What? Hey, aren't you? You must be that high schooler skirting the child labor laws who I've heard so much about. Um, say that again. Sorry about that. He's with me. Mr. Sutsumi, if that's how you feel, maybe you should look into improving my working conditions. I'd prefer not to work for free, to be honest. Don't you worry about that. If you help us out, you can have whatever you want. Bosses, treat! Wait. Really? Thank you so much. I've always wanted to go to a fancy sushi place. Oh, yeah. Like one of those places in Ginza? I've never been. Let's go. We got ourselves a deal. Uh, right, boss? These girls are at our service. Hold on now. What just happened? I never said I'd... Sushi? Uh, looking forward to it, boss. Wait, since when were you included? <laughs> you guys are funny. You should do stand-up. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who left these girls in the crime scene? Like, what? Forensics are still investigating the area. I didn't really want to bring these kids to a place like this, but... There were too many onlookers outside for us to speak comfortably. Besides, it would be good to have Mio look around the scene, too. What's that rope all about? It indicates where Joan... It indicates where Jonochi's body was found! They moved his body, but this way we still have an idea of how it was found. 
Yikes, that's a little gross. You can see how his arms and legs are all... Ugh. Cool it, Ayo, you're scaring her. This kind of stuff is a little too much for a kid. Hey, I'm pretty sure she only asked because you were staring at it so intently. <laughs> Alright, that's enough. Mio, what do you think? I knew for a second I looked at the scene. You're right. Traces of a curse still linger here. I figured as much. Does that mean Junoki was killed by one of the curses of the Seven Mysteries? Yes. A strong curse like that always leaves behind a trace. Wow, Mio, you're so calm. Are you used to this kind of thing? Um, I wouldn't say I'm used to it. It just comes with experience, I guess. No? I've heard some stories about you. Didn't you investigate a gruesome scene where someone had been killed by a paranormal attack without even breaking a sweat? Stop it, Mr. Tsutsumi. She's going to get the wrong idea. Whoa, that's amazing. Mio, you're a professional. You think? Totally. You're cool even in the face of death. That's awesome. Are they flirting? <laughs> um, when you put it like that, I'm not sure how awesome it is. So a curse was used here, which means the curse bearer must have been on the scene too. So how much have you been able? So how much have you been able to figure out? Well, I know what happened around midnight last night. Someone invoked the Feast of Shadows, which boosts the power of curses, then brought forth the Seven Mysteries of Honjo. That allows even those who don't have the power to cast curses to gather soul dregs for the Rider Resurrection. At least, that's my hypothesis. Sounds about right so far. Are you sure you know there are exactly nine mysteries, not seven? When the Feast of Shadows was cast, the cursed stones appeared before those who wanted the Rider at the locals of the Seven Mysteries. We've managed to gather three curse stones so far, including the one I got first, the Evergreen Beach. You've gotten three already? Wow. We have the curse stone of the fool's possession. Well, Yako, the girl standing behind me does. That's me, Yako, the girl standing behind Mio. <laughs> she does. Is she all right? We could take it off your hands. Well, the Feast of Shadows has no effect during the day, and there's still something I want to find out. All right, I'll leave the fool's possession with you two then. Thank you. Please keep collecting the other curse stones. I'll be looking for a way to stop the feast of shadows. Okay, got it. That should make things go more smoothly. What about the other curse bearers? Have you run into any of them? Well, last night at school. You were here last night? Er, yes, you see. Huh. You two were using a spirit board. That's so cool. Thus, when you ran into the curse Echo, I'm glad you survived the encounter. Somehow, we managed to get away without accidentally setting it off. The curse Echo we took so that... The curse Echo we saw took the shape of a woman missing an arm and a leg. What? A woman missing an arm and a leg, that's... The Evergreen Beach. Was there something like that in that story? I don't think there was. Me neither. There definitely wasn't. Okay. Okay, I get it. Come on, think. The lady missing an arm and leg was from... Evergreen Lantern. The Taiko of Sugaru. <laughs> the one-sided reed. 
Oh no, the murderer's here. The one-sided reed. This is bad. Huh, what's so bad about that one? You idiot. Think. The curse bear the one-sided reed is... Murderer. Najima. Fumichika Najima. He admitted it himself. That's his curse. Oh, that's her right. Wait, but if that's the case... Najima might be here from last night. Who? Who? What? I mean, it's possible he was lying to us, but... Who? What? Um, who's Najima? No clue. So, Najima is trying to take advantage of the Feast of Shadows for his own nefarious purposes. Huh? He said he's going to massacre the city at sundown today. And he's trying to get your daughter too? That's why we've been trying to find him. But to no avail. Honestly, this information has been the most useful we've gotten so far. So just to be sure, could you tell us who else was at the school last night? Well, as far as we know... There was us, Mr. Junuchi, and one of our classmates, Hitomi. Don't forget old man Ashimiya. Is the janitor the killer? Oh, wait. Hitomi? Do you mean Hitomi Akuda, second year student? Um, well, yes. Why? Boss! So she was here last night. I saw Hitomi earlier, though, and she didn't seem like a curse bearer to me. You did? Did you talk to her? Um, yes. Would you mind if we asked you a few questions about that? Hitomi said she didn't want to talk to the police because she was afraid she'd become a suspect. So I can't tell you anything unless you swear you won't drag her into this. Huh. I see. Don't worry. This is a very different matter. A different matter? You mean about the police officer, Mr. Yoshumi? You know about that? Did Hitomi say anything about him? Yes, she did actually. If we're talking about people who were at school last night, there was one more person though, I'm not too clear on the details. There was someone else. Apparently Hitomi actually saw Mr. Junochi getting cursed and killed last night. What? Talk about some vital information. What she said happened was... Michio was the one who killed Mr. Junuchi? Are you sure it was really Michio he saw? Well, that's what she told me. I wasn't there. That must mean there was another curse bearer here last night. Junuchi was killed by a curse, so someone had to have been there. Whether it was Michio or not. Damn, boss. Do you think it really could have been Michio's ghost? I mean, based on what we've heard, she does have plenty of reasons to be vengeful. Calm down. Just because the paranormal exists doesn't mean just anything is possible. It's still possible that Najima was behind Jinochi's death. But what about Hitomi's story? About this janitor. Ashimaya was it? About this janitor. Ashimiya was it? How old was he? Do you know how long he's worked here? Huh? Why are you so interested in him all of a sudden? I only just transferred to the school though, so I have no idea. He's around 50 years old. He came to our school about half a year ago. No one knows what he did before, so there are all kinds of rumors about him. I see. Thanks. I think I'm starting to get a better picture of all this. Huh? Listen up. I'm not- it's not uncommon for former prisoners to find work under an alias after their release. The notoriety attached to their former name can get in the way of proper rehabilitation, you see. What are you- no way! Edio, have the officers apprehended the janitor. Edio, have the officers apprehended the janitor. He worked the night shift, so he still might be in the overnight room. Yes, right away. Boss, bad news. Uh, apparently the room's been empty all morning. 
Sounds like they look. Sounds like they've been looking to question Ashimiya too, but they couldn't find him anywhere. No. That all but confirms it. Just one more thing to check. Are there any photos of this Ashimiya? Huh. The old man seriously hated getting his photo taken. Huh. The old man seriously hated getting his photo taken. He'd always avoid it. Adio. Felt an urgent search for a meek. Adio. Call an urgent search for Mahakoto Ashimiya. We can't let him get away. Yes, sir. I'll contact HQ right away. Oh my, I didn't expect this at all. Yeah, how could that old man have been some horrible criminal mastermind? I can't believe it. And a curse bearer on top of that. To think he was so close to us this whole time, uh, it gives me chills. A guy like that really shouldn't have been allowed to work at a high school. Let's hope it isn't already too late. Oh, I, I may have shown Ashima my curse stone last night. What? I don't like this one bit. Najima did say he wasn't specifically targeting curse bearers, but... I'm glad nothing happened to you. Wait, but then... Could it have been old man Ash Ashimiya who attacked you in the hallway? Oh, I almost told him that you were still in the building too. What? You did? Yikes. Good thing I didn't say anything. You must have gotten very lucky there, kid. Man, calling out my mistake so mean. This is too much. I hope they find him soon. Come on, long arm of the law, help us. To put a stop to the Feast of the Shadows, it would help if I knew more about how the curses of the Seven Mysteries first came about. Hmm. In that case, you're probably best off talking to that crabby researcher guy. You mean Mr. Araishi? I would very much like to talk to him. All right. He's a teacher here, too, isn't he? You know him already. He might be more inclined to talk if it's one of his students doing the asking. Do you know where he is? I do. We tried to talk to him, but he refused to cooperate. But you two should give it a try. He's at his usual cafe working on his papers. The cafe. Oh, Kurokiyo Cafe in Kamizawa. Thanks. We'll head over there now. Uh, school rules says we're not allowed to go to cafes, though. Don't worry about it. I'll allow it. Thank you. Huh, that's all it takes? There must be a mastermind behind everything. Someone who orchestrated all this for a reason. I want to find out why. Hitomi did say that Mr. Yoshimi entrusted her with something. He did? What was it? Yoshimi gave her a talisman? Yes, apparently he also asked her to look for another one just like it. One that Michio had. Ooh, what kind of talismans could they be? Um, boss? Doesn't ring a bell. But if Yoshimi was talking about him with his dying breath... They must have been pretty important. Did they find a talisman on Michio where her body was found? I'll check, but if they did, Yoshimi would have had plenty of time to retrieve it before he died. Right. Would you consider giving us Hitomi's contact info or mission? I'd like to talk to her about this talisman. I'm not sure. She never opened up to anyone except Mr. Yoshimi. I'm no good, huh? I was friends with Yoshimi, though. You don't seem like too bad of a guy. Not all that scary for a cop. But I doubt that'll be enough for her. She really doesn't want to end up becoming a suspect. To be honest, she was even a bit wary of us. Hmm. Well then. Do you think she talked to Yoshimi's fiancé? Have they met before? Oh, they have. She told us about that. Yes, yeah, she might be willing to talk to her. All right, then we better find her fast. You haven't been able to reach her? That's a little worrying.
Mayo Chizawa. We'll let you know as soon as we manage to contact her. Okay. I'll be willing to give Hitomi's contact information to her. Alright. One more thing. Hitomi told me that Mr. Yoshimi gave her instructions in the event that something happened to him. He told her to give the talisman to Mr. Nakagoshi from the police headquarters. Wait. What? So it was a Nakagoshi case. Hmm. Why would Yoshimi tell her that? Could you check on that? I will, but... Well... I don't know if they'll pick up on a call. Is he with the Paranormal Affairs Bureau? Well, yes. Nakagoshi's the chief. But he's almost never in, so I don't really know the guy. To be honest, I'm not even sure if he exists or if he's just a figurehead. I've never spoken to him myself. All of Paranormal Affairs cases are referred to as Nakagoshi cases. Jeez, what's up with that? That amulet Hitomi was looking for may be the missing puzzle piece to this mystery. Oh, we can talk to Yako too. Um, what was that thing you mentioned about Michio earlier? Something about a grudge? Did you know anything about her? Uh? What's your relation? I'm her friend. I was actually planning to resurrect her at first. Uh, I see. We gain quite a lot of information from you two. It's only fair we share as well. Tell her audio. Alright. Keep in mind that this is just a theory, though. Okay. After re-examining the crime scene, Yoshimo... After re-examining the crime scene, Yoshimi concluded that Michio's death wasn't a suicide, but a vehicular collision. Wait, what? An accident? Being hit by a speeding truck or a van would have resulted in similar injuries. The investigation was ordered by Yoshimi, so it seems he had doubts about it being a suicide. What? A van? Speeding? Yako, what's wrong? Are you okay? Uh. Uh. A van. There's a young man in the driver's seat. In the passenger seat is a woman. Yako! Oh, huh? Guess? Wait, was I... Are you back now? How do you feel? You're covered in sweat. Oh. Yeah, I'm okay, I think. Sorry, I, I went a little crazy there. It's no problem, as long as you're okay. That was quite the surprise, though. Um, Yoshimi talked to you about Michio, didn't he? Well, he didn't give me any specifics, if you're wondering about that. So I don't know what you're truly on. So I don't know what was really on Michio's mind, either. Right. Do you have any idea why Junuchi was so scared of Michio? Well, about that. I'm not sure exactly how to put this, but... I see. Well, I have ex... I see. Well, I have expected it was something like that. Thank you for telling me. Sorry, it's hard to explain. I wonder what he got his hands on to be able to blackmail her like that. Michio, what happened? Let's talk to Edio. This is one hell of a coincidence, huh? That this random girl you know is already involved with the case. Hey, boss. Forensics is calling. I'll go see what they have to say. Sure. Thanks. Um, boss, they found this on the ground a short distance away from the scene. 
What is that? A ribbon. Yeah, the kind you use to tie up your hair. What? I've seen that ribbon before. You have? Go on then. That's the ribbon that Michio always used to wear. What? Doesn't that mean that Michio was here? Are you sure? Definitely. I have the same one at home. We bought them together. That has to be hers. Then, did she come back to life somehow? But how? Uh oh. If I was Michio and I came back to life, where would I go? That's the question. She got her revenge on Junuchi, but she may have more revenge to dish out. Is there anyone else she'd have a grudge against? Well, what about the guy who killed her in the collision? If she really did come back to life, then it's terribly sad that she's spending her new chance at life like this. Being obsessed with revenge is such a tragic way to live. I'm afraid that's all we can tell you. Don't worry. You were a big help. Thank you. We should start our search for an Ajima in Mayu Ko We should start our search for an Ajima in Mayu Chozawa. It might be worth it might be worth it to check Michio's house as well, just in case. Let's use the school as our base of operations. If anything happens, go to one of the officers hanging around here. Got it. Thank you and good luck. We'll go talk to Mr. Araishi about a way to lift this curse. Alright, boss. Let's get going whenever you're ready. Two. The upbeat music is so good. <laughs> I'm gonna think. We'll leave the curse lifting to the girls while we go looking for Nejima and Chozawa. There's also the matter of Yoshimi's talisman. We won't get anything done staying here. We better get a move on. Let's get a move on! And run some ads. Because guys, we are four hours in the stream and my voice is dead. But you know what? I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go until it's like completely shut. So... If you want to avoid that ad, all you must do is subscribe. Four ninety nine, just five dollars. Skip your coffee and get ad free viewing all month long. Or you can link your Amazon Prime to Twitter and hashtag sub for free with Prime. Click subscribe. To see if you got a sub available. We are speed running right now. I generally feel like we're hitting the meat and potatoes, like figuring out the bigger picture. Realistically, I can probably only go for another hour. <clears throat> okay, it's time to get a move on. Oh, come on! Oh, it was the high schooler's POV. Okay. I thought we were back in the cops. Ooh, let's go cop POV because we ran into the, the lady. Dead or alive, how do we and Richard visit Michio's home? Have we determined her to be a key player in the unresolved kidnapping case from a year before? As the complicated story begins to unravel, they encounter two men. I wonder... How do we 
Shigima, 10 a.m. Near the Shiraishi household. Ma'am, allow me to introduce one of my country's most elite detectives. The name's June. Anywho, I'd hardly call myself elite, but either way, it's nice to meet you. This here is the brilliant Chief Inspector Sutsumi, and yes, he's just as rough and tumble as he looks. Sometimes I really don't know if you're complimenting or putting me down. So, you two are detectives. This is my client, Mrs. Haraway Shigima. Her father's a big deal in the police himself, so remember, so her father's a big deal in the police himself, so remember to mind your manners. Oh, big wig named Shigima? Boss, you know of this guy? Shit. I've heard his name, but you know I don't keep track of who's who in the upper echelons. There's no need to worry. I am my own person after all, and my father has nothing to do with any of this. Ooh, did you hear that, boss? Looks like you're getting off easy again this time. Don't make it sound like I'm involved in some shady business. It ain't like that. You both seem rather jovial despite being detectives. How rare. All the police officers I've met have always been so... dull. Well, you won't find any dull cops here. We'll round up all your criminals with a smile. <laughs> well, you won't find any dull cops here. We'll round up all your criminals with a smile. That's our motto. How lovely. Keep it up. Just hold on one second. This is the first I'm hearing that. Well, you're right about them not being your typical detectives. I thought we might cause trouble standing in the middle of the street talking like this, but so far we haven't drawn attention. Then again, that might just be because nobody wants to get involved with the case. Tetsu. By the way, ma'am, this might be sudden, but there's something I'd like to confirm with you. And that is... Do you happen to know anything about the Seven Mysteries of Hondro? Huh? Sorry, Chief, but that's hardly... With all due respect, Investigator, I think my question was addressed to the lady. Huh. If you insist. What do you say, ma'am? Can you tell us anything? Um... Uh, nothing. Can't say I know much. Is that so? Well, I'm sorry for the intrusion. Dang it. Come to think of it, I've heard some things about this area last night. Something about a strange yet conspicuous man dressed in white, loitering around. Oh, wait a second. I assume they were talking about you, investigator. Well, I won't argue that I'm strange and conspicuously dressed in white. And as it turns out, I was out here last night to conduct my investigation. Did you run into anything strange or out of the ordinary? Out of the ordinary? Hmm. I guess I did observe a few suspicious characters. You were asking about curses just now. Why would a public servant be interested in the occult? Boss, Rich is a smart man. He can help us if we tell him what we know. I can't promise I'll be of any help to you, but I am interested in hearing what you got to say. Something is happening in Honjo, isn't there? It must be something big if they've got your head office guys on it. Well, I guess it's alright. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Thank you, boss. Listen closely to what you were about to say, Richard. Oh. Huh. So by using curses to commit murders, these people collect soul dredges to perform the rite of resurrection. And these curse stones are somehow connected to the seven mysteries of Honjo. It's a tough story to swallow, but I don't see a reason to doubt you either. 
we figure the strange uh, occurrences happening around here recently are connected to these curses. To get this situation under control, we've been searching for the curse bearers to confiscate their curse stones. Do you have any information that might help us? That's tough. I never experienced curses or other mumbo jumbo to play into this all. But if we're talking shady characters, there was this middle-aged fellow I saw in South. There was this middle-aged fellow I saw in South Wadigeshui Street. He had an average build. He was anxious, like he was searching for prey. Boss, well, what do you think? Well, considering the location, it could have been Hideki Araishi. We've already got his curse stone. Impressive. You two are working quick. Did you see anything else? Not that I can remember. That's a shame. If you see any characters who look like they might be carrying a curse stone, it'd be a huge help if you let us know. Absolutely. I'll let you know if I find anything. Ooh, Richard, perhaps you can lend a hand on our case too. There's a number of people we can't track, and finding missing persons happens to be your specialty, you no? Know? I hate to disappoint you, but I'm busy enough with this case. The faith of my clients is what keeps me afloat. I have to prioritize requests by the order in which they come. I see. Well, can't say that's not fair. What do you need a private investigator for, anyway? The cops should have plenty of bright folks to throw at the job. True, but... This isn't an ordinary case we're dealing with here. What brings you here, Richard? You want a case? That's right. I'm picking up the police's slack. I trust you remember the kidnapping and murder case from last year. Oh, I remember now. You're that Haraway Shigima from the kidnapping case. Huh, oh, did I miss something? Don't be an idiot. It was the case where... It was... Don't be an idiot. It was the case where Muresara Shigima's grandson was kidnapped. Which must have been your son, ma'am. Indeed. The story was suppressed by the news. In the end, it was considered a huge failure on the police department's fault. Most of the investigation was conducted in secret. And unfortunately, the department is unwilling to reopen the case. Any investigation carried out afterwards turned up nothing at all, which is why I'm now on the job. So they never caught the culprit, huh? That's a rough... So your findings have brought you to this place, then? That's right. An individual connected to the case used to live around here. He used to? That's right. As of last week, they're deceased. We'd hope to talk to the family. No one was home when I checked last time, so we figured we'd try again. Interesting. Huh? By the way, that reminds me, Richard. Yes. You said the person who lived here died last week. You want to be referring to Michio Shiraishi by chance? You knew. I thought so. It seems like we're here for the same reason then. Seriously? Michio was involved with curses and magic? Strictly speaking, the curse part isn't our concern. We're looking into Yoshimi's case. Yoshimi? All right. Hajime Yoshimis. That's right, he died on the job. I'm sure you've heard of it. I heard. It was a most unfortunate loss. So there's a connection between Hajime Yoshimi of the juvenile dimension and Michio. Well, hold on. Let's focus on Michio for a second. You think she had something to do with the kidnapping? Hmm. Talk about unforeseen developments. Exchanging information should prove mutually beneficial. I'll tell you what I know, but in turn, I want the full scoop of your findings concerning Machio. Sure, to tell you the truth. What? You believe Machio's ghost is the one who killed Mr. Junucci? So he wasn't just mumbling nonsense. I mean, we haven't fully confirmed anything yet. But the testimonies we've heard, and the evidence we found point in that direction. Testimony? You mean from those, uh, psychic high schoolers? Didn't they also say there was a chance Machio hadn't killed herself? 
Wait, if that's all true, then... Did you figure something out? Kan... Kan Kichiro Iwai. Huh? Kan Kichiro Iwai. You'll be the next victim. We have to open the door to Shiraishi's house. We need to look inside. Hey, what's gotten into you, boss? I'm sure the landlord would give us the key if we asked. Screw that. You know how long they could take. We can ask for a permission later. Hello, uh, Richard? Wait, that's how do we? Richard? Hey, Richard, calm down. We can't just... The stepdad's gonna be dead inside. Take that, you shitty door. That's how you do it. Oh, Richard, get a hold of yourself. I see you're still the same as always. Everyone, come quick. Look at this. Oh. Oh, whoa. What's up with this room? Boss, there's a dead body in here. Whoa. Could that be Machio's dad? No. He's our stepdad at best, if that. It's gotta be the body of Kan Kichido Iwai. There's no doubt about it, the man's a goner. He's gotten real messed up. Looks like he's been like this for a while. I'd say it happened last night. Edio, did you find Jonichi's body in the same state? Now that you mention it, it looked as though Kohei Jonichi has died from a number of heavy blows. What are you suggesting, investigator? It was Machio Shiraishi. She's alive. She used the power of the curses to get back at the men who ruined her life. That's ridiculous. You're suggesting she actually revived? It's gotta be that. And if she's alive, then... My apologies for interrupting. I know we just arrived at an interesting plot point. But do you really think a dead girl is going around taking revenge from beyond the grave? Consider this. What if Michio Shiraishi never died? But seeing as you've come this far, I'm sure you already know the truth, don't you? And so, I would have you answer me a question. Where in Honji was Michio Shiraishi the hour of 8 o'clock this morning? Eight o'clock. I'm clueless. I don't know. In the morning, they said they assume he's been dead since nightfall. she killed the teacher at like midnight or like one o'clock in the morning I don't know I think the obvious guess is the house but that can't be it Not at the park, because the park was locked down all night. I'd say the school. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see. I see. So that's what you think. Let's take a moment to reconsider what you know and choose again, shall we? <laughs> I don't know! She's at her house. She was at the candy shop.
I see you very well. Congratulations, you are correct. You got it wrong two times? Well, it's a trivial matter. It may have been easier to reach that conclusion had you considered the cause of death. Let's get back to the story then, shall we? I've taken up enough of your time. But why would she be outside Yoko's house? Ooh, what? So you really think Michio Shiraishi is alive? Just think it through and it all becomes obvious. It tracks, but... Do you really think that girl could have managed all this? First of all, Adio, we'll report this to HQ. Understood. I'll get on it right away. I'll start investigating this place. It sure isn't locking and stuff that needs looking at. There's a bunch of photos of the same person posted on the wall back there. Huh? Whoa, now, hold on. Those photos. These are all of Fud Fumichika Nijima. Gross. Really? Come to think of it, he was in the papers a lot back in the day. Oh, there are even more pasted up over here. These are all cutouts from newspapers and magazines about the Nejima murders. I don't get it. Why the weirdo shrine? Let's keep looking around. Look at these. Pictures of Fumichika Nejima cut out from newspapers and magazines. Whoever put these up were obsessed. I wonder what their intent was. You think the Shirai Shis are somehow connected to Nejima's case? Perhaps they did this as not to forget a garage or something. It's crazy to think Najima might be involved in all this, too. Huh. Do you think it might have anything to do with this body here? Maybe. The man's already out on parole. He's a curse bearer with a curse stone now. He announced that from sundown today he'll be going on a killing spree. Oh dear. There's an emergency surge underway as we speak, but no one's yet managed to get a hold of the bastard. So he hasn't changed his ways? That doesn't bode well. To tell you the truth, the lady here isn't completely unconnected from the Me Nejima murders, either. You don't say. That's right. We talked about it last night. Twenty years ago, I found the hand in Sumida River. Twenty years ago, I found the hand in Sumida River that brought the incident to light. You don't say. You were the kid from back then. You were really brave. You did a great deed. Were you the detective I spoke with? I had no idea. So you two have met before. Fancy that. I've been worried that Fumichika Nijima might bear resentment towards you, ma'am. Hmm. You might be right. Unfortunately, that asshole is quite the resentful type. Oh, dear. That asshole. I wonder who put the idea into his head. And now he's got the one-sided read, too. He's threatening to massacre the people of Honjo at sundown. Seriously? On top of that, he's been itching to get revenge on me as well. Of all things, the man's gone and threatened to kill my daughter. Damn, that's quite the threat. Certainly we can't afford to stay put here. The fucker wants to get us all antsy. When I finally get to arresting him, it'll be with a cool head. Not gonna give him the pleasure, huh? Well, if Iwai and Fumichika Nijima have anything to do with each other, then this room might hold a clue to Nijima's location. Let's hope so. The person who put all these photos up must be obsessed with the Najima. They might have some relation with Najima's victims, or perhaps it was the opposite. The opposite? What if it wasn't loathing, but admiration? But then... With the window and storm shutter closed, no light gets in here at all. It's pitch black. The neighbors mentioned they started to keep the house shut like this not too long ago. It's the same man in every picture. Is that Fumichika Nijima? Wow, this is quite the spectacle. I don't think I'll ever manage to erase this from my mind. Don't worry, Richard. You're quite the spectacle yourself. Do you mean to compare me with the likes of a bizarre criminal? <laughs> Got him.
This drawer is really old. Chief Inspector, do you mind if I look inside? Huh? I mean, in normal cases, only the police would be allowed to touch things, right? Right? Eddie wasn't here, so let me take a look at it. There's just clothes in here. Not much variety either. Can't say they were big spenders. Well, I was hoping to find some kind of talisman here, but I guess we're not so lucky. I see. Thank you anyway. These aren't just cut off from publications. They even snapped a number of shots of their own. They must have admired him. Why else would they have collected so many pictures? Whatever the case, it's certain they were obsessed. It's off-putting to look at, but I can't help but wonder what in the world this is. They're magic runes. They're used in Western black magic rituals. Most of the time, they're useless imitations, though I wouldn't get too excited about it. Oh my, who knew the Chief Inspector would be such an expert on the occult? I just chanced upon that information. That girl with the spirit sense we mentioned, she's pretty informed on the subject. Hmm. Someone was attempting to perform Western black magic in this place. Pretty absurd if you ask me. Of course, the person in question was dead serious about it all. <laughs> Get it? Dead. It looks like the things spread around here have been here like this for a while now. This ritual, or whatever, was something he attempted up to recently. Plenty of the neighbors mentioned having heard strange mantra-like noises coming from here during the night. You think EY was the one chanting? Hard to say. Could have been one of the Shiraishis as well. If we look through these books in the back, we might learn whatever is it. If we look through these books in the back, we might learn whatever it is they were trying to do. There are old books scattered everywhere. I wonder what they're about. Many of them are written in a foreign language. It'll be a pain to look through all these. Let's save them for later and continue to look around. These candles and stones with inscriptions placed all over. Are these tools for some ritual? Hey, don't touch anything, you hear? Oh, <laughs> that's right. Considering this is a murder scene, we have to leave everything as it is. All of these can be used as evidence. If anyone besides forensic toys with it, it'll cause trouble down the road. I kind of want to save the corpse for last. Ooh, sliding door. This sliding door leads to the kitchen. It barely fits the frame. There's nothing around to confirm his identity, but by the looks of him, I'd say he's Kanchi Chiro Iwai. You've seen him before. I've already had a, I heard he had a criminal record, so I assumed he wouldn't have held a respectable occupation. Is this? What a curse does to a person? Ma'am, it'd be better not to look so closely. It's amazing. What? She's a freak. Cruel is what it is. She's a freak. What do you say, Chief? Would you let me look through it if I wore gloves? Well... It's not like I'm any help with foreign languages. Go ahead. Thank you. Huh. This seems to be a book on Western black magic. The same runes are written here. The same runes are written here. Alongside detailed descriptions of the procedures. I suppose you call them grimoires? It's all a bunch of nonsense if you ask me, though. You think this EY guy was studying them? Perhaps to for- You think this EY guy was studying them? Perhaps to for- <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I struggle with F so much. <clears throat> you think this EY guy was studying them, perhaps to perform some kind of ritual? There were a bunch of handwritten notes besides the Grimoires. Whoever it was, they were serious about it. EY doesn't look the type to be into this stuff, but you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But why would he be studying black magic? According to the materials, this here rune is for the restoration of youth. 
Perhaps he was trying to become young again. Maybe he had to sacrifice a young person so he killed his daughter. This over here seems to be black magic related to resurrection. Each one of these spells requires a human sacrifice. Talk about dangerous. Resurrection? Like the right. I guess no matter what part of the world, people will turn to the occult for similar reasons. Hmm? What is it? This looks like a journal. It's probably E-Wise. Journal. Mm hmm His writing is surprisingly thorough. It's almost as if he was writing a report for someone. Oh, wow. Now this is something. What is it? What did he write? This is quite the find. Let me give you a summary. So this Kaki Chido Iwai fellow, he'd been searching for a spell to restore youth for years. So he was into black magic from the start. He believed if he could learn to successfully perform the spell, he 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 believed if he could learn to successfully perform the spell, he could. He believed if he could learn to successfully perform the spell, he could then use it to earn a fortune. To tell you the truth, it seems he was already getting funded after he acquired this grimoire. You don't say. This is starting to sound kind of familiar. But first, let's find out how he got hands on this grimoire. It seems that Nijima told him where he could obtain the book while they were both in prison. What? That's nearly too much of a coincidence. Likely not coincidence, it seems like EY took an interest in the Nejima murders after he made the news. He admired him rather passionately. He might even say he worshipped the man. Worship? Nejima of all people. This was a time when students were itching to rebel. Anyone who did something to shake the world was bound to gather admirers. EY had been collecting these photos ever since that time. And since he just so happened to land in prison at the same time as Nejima, he made sure to get in contact. This is a lot. I mean, even having it all laid out like this... The thought of Nijima being involved with these grimoires is staggering. I don't think we ever had anything pointed to that. What's the connection? To be honest, it's a shock to me too. For years, we've been scratching our heads over the motives behind the Nejima murders. Yup, it's been a mystery to us all from the very start. Well now, wait. Just one minute. Do you think? No way. Are you saying? That's right. The murders must have been a ritual. He was attempting to perform black magic. The instructions written down for the sacrificial offering match up exactly with the acts carried out by Najima. You've got to be kidding me. So that sadistic crap he was doing was all for black magic? That's what the evidence suggests. However, Nejima tried to do some type of resurrection ritual, but EY had different motives. Chief Inspector, you might think this is all the stuff of fantasy, but... That doesn't refute that Nejima and EY were both acting in earnest. That is batshit insane. You're telling me that Nutjob did this all for some hokey pokey resurrection. Shit. Resurrection. That means there must have been someone Nejima wanted to bring back to life. Damn. That's it. That has to be it. Fucking hell. It all makes sense now. What? What is it? So, about the Nejima murders. There's some information that's been kept from the public. Go on. When we broke into his house and arrested him, we also found a baby. Did he kill his baby? A baby? It was a girl, looked to be about six months old, but she was covered in filth. She looked so weak and sickly. We called the medics right away. If we were a second later, I'm sure the girl would have died. Imagine. What? So, so that means the baby is alive. The baby's at least 20 years old. Probably hidden identity. 
Because, you know, the dad's a murderer. So it was Najima the father. He told us he'd found her under a bridge. He found her. She was abandoned? I've heard of parents threatening to leave their child under a bridge of this. I've heard of parents threatening to leave their child under a bridge as a threat, but to think it really happens. Huh. I suppose there are those cases with the dead newborns found stuffed in coin lockers, so it's not without precedent. Whatever the case, we never found out the truth. But there's one rumor from back then that I could never get out of my mind. And it's starting to sound more likely now? Well, I'm sure this isn't the first time you've heard of it. Many believe Najima's guilty of more crimes than what got him convicted. Back then, a lot of girls went missing. Yeah, I remember all of that. Among the high school girls that might have been murdered, or maybe, I should say, sacrificed, was a girl who got pregnant. Goodness. That's horrific. He killed her. And dismembered her body. And we thought maybe the baby we found is what he pulled up from inside of her. Don't misunderstand me. This is all speculation on top of more speculation, here. But I for one never believed that man would just take in a baby he found under a bridge. I'm feeling sick. Stay strong, ma'am. I know this is hard to hear. Like I said, don't take that to be the full truth. We were running on speculation back then. Now that this whole resurrection magic has come into play, we should consider the possibility it was his child. And that maybe he was trying to revive whoever the mother might have been. Just a theory. A name theory. Dang. This is getting good! Oh my god. It's just a theory. But my life would be a tad easier if it were true. That's an interesting thought. If there's anyone Najima would want to resurrect, a deceased wife would... If there's anyone Najima would want to resurrect, a deceased wife is as good a guess as any. The fact that he obtained a curse stone suggests he has an interest in the rite of resurrection. Damn, you're right. And here I was thinking that he was only after the curse's power to massacre. Um, Chief Inspector. Yeah? What happened to the child? Without a birth registration on file, best we could do is find the girl some suitable foster parents. It was decided to keep the circumstances secret for the sake of the child's future. Well, I'm glad she was taken care of. Dang, that was a lot. The baby's gotta be at least 20 years old, though. So they're, they're an adult now. Like a college kid. Don't mean to derail the conversation, but there's still more written in EY's journal. We know EY had managed to obtain the Grimoire thanks to the advice he got from his idol, Najima, while in prison. After conducting research and gathering more information, he determined he had a chance to get rich quick. Right. He thought he could make some money if he could successfully use rejuvenation magic. Correct. Turns out someone gave him the ba turns out someone gave him a turns out someone gave him the idea. And get this. It was the one and only queen and chairwoman of Hihako Soaps herself, Natsue Yamamori. Wait, the chairwoman of Hihako Soaps? So, that's where this leads. Here, let me let you read. Here, let me read what he wrote. The queen of Hiyaku has a strange fear of growing old. Her fear of death is even worse. If she does die, she wishes to be revived, and she will spend whatever it takes to preserve her beauty. Magic, rituals, and rites. She'll use whatever means necessary. Her tenacity is unbelievable. He was apparently investing money into any research on resurrection, the restoration of youth, and the like. Hmm. So he would... Hmm. So she would even throw her money at the occult. The place's greed will take you. Well then, that brings us to... Hideki Araishi. She presumably funded his research into Rider Resurrection as well. That's what this all points towards. I wouldn't be surprised if the Witch of Hihaku pronounced at the rumors of the Rider Resurrection. It's starting to sound likely. It might also be the reason why she's spreading the rumor about having godly powers. 
It's a convenient cover for it if she becomes young again. Godly powers? What's that all about? Ah, uh, you can ignore that. By the way, I think Yuai took the payments he was getting for his research to seduce a family into taking him in to keep a low profile. The Shiraishi family, Michio and her mother, Toshiko, were just his unlucky marks. And this is where you get involved? Are you feeling steady, ma'am? Huh? This has something to do with me. No, you can't mean... You've realized, then. Perhaps. EY? Child? Wait, 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 wait. Natsue Yamamori. Toshiko Shiraishi. Michio Shiraishi. Kanchiro Iwa. Umicho. Okay. Was a child? Okay, Shiraishi is the professor, the scholar. Michio? Michio? Wait. Michio Shiraishi? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't know! I don't know! <laughs> EY? Magic? Was a channel. Can I? I don't want to make a guess. I want him to tell me. I don't know. <laughs> the Jima. Living sacrifice was a child. Umichika's Najima's living sacrifice was a child. Dang it! What, ma'am? Please calm down. This wasn't it. Oh, was I mistaken? Then what did you mean? Ma'am, please calm down. Yiwai moved in with the Shiraishis to practice his magic. He needed a sacrifice to perform his youth restoration spell, but... Oh, did he kidnap my baby? Or my child? That meant extracting the life force from someone young. Oh. Oh. So it was Yiwai. This man... Iwai worshipped Najima, so he must have also despised Najima's detractors. Not to mention he was captured and sent to jail once before. Surely he had a bone to pick with the police. That's why they picked that's why he picked her son? Because her father, the grandfather, was big in the police force. Oh no. So when he realized he had the chance to both avenge Najima, embarrass the police, and acquire living sacrifice at the same time? Fuck. You got it. Iwai kidnapped Harue Shigima's son and managed to score three birds with one stone. Oh, you're telling me that that horrid man, he never had the intention of returning my child. Oh. I thought there might have been a reason why the kidnapper seemed to be mocking the police. He never wanted money. His aim was to humiliate the force. It all makes sense. He must have used Michio to lower your boy's defenses. And they kidnapped him on his way back home. Oh, because yeah, he... He also... Oh, okay. Because I remember Michio lured the boy into the car. But Michio was EY's stepdaughter. Dude. That man. He took... Shuichi. Huh. Uh-oh. She's gonna explode. <laughs> Ma'am, please calm down. I understand, but you must remember to breathe. You don't understand. You have absolutely no idea what I'm going through. This isn't a joke. I wouldn't expect the police to understand. You'll never understand. Living sacrifices? What a stupid, stupid idea from a stupid little man. Okay, ma'am. Let's just take a moment to breathe. Why don't we go get some fresh air? 
I can't believe this. This is... This is... Chief, I think it's best we take our leave. But before we go, there's one more important piece of information noted in this journal. Oh. Hiwai got in contact with Najima last year, after Najima was released on parole. He provided him with accommodation and financial support. Is that so? He managed to find a hideout for Najima to stay in. Damn it. If anything, rather than use his money to support the Shiraishis, it seemed most went to Najima instead. If Najima's lurking around anywhere at the moment, it's probably in that hideout. Did you rank where it is? No! Unfortunately, no. Not that I can tell. But it seems Michio knew where it was. She never met with Nichio in per- or sorry. <laughs> she never met with Nijima in person, but she was made to go in and clean up among other things. What good is that information? The girl's already dead. Wait, no. She's alive. That's right. Michio Shirai, she is alive. If you can find her and get her to talk, you can get her to spill the beans on his hideout too. Investigator, I'm asking you. I should be going. The lady's not well. Damn! That was so much. Back on the bridge. Are you feeling better now that we've gotten some fresh air, ma'am? Dude, this is the river where she found the cut-off hand. This is not a good place. I'm... Fine. Suddenly finding out who the kidnapper was really made me lose my wits. We managed to solve the kidnapping case by pure luck here. You're right. But, Richard... I... I feel grateful towards Michio. Because she killed the kidnapper? There's that too. But it's for something else. If Machio is the one killing all these people, then she must have acquired quite a sizable amount by now. Soul drugs, I mean. Huh? Hey, Richard? Whether the kidnapper is dead or alive, it doesn't mean a thing. Revenge won't bring my boy back. And if Najima is planning to cause a massacre to collect soul dregs, then all the better. I won't give up on resurrection. So, I'm counting on you. Damn! Too much to handle. Honestly, that was a lot. The best crossover so far. That was such a huge lore dump. I had no idea that the murder was gonna come back. At the like to be involved and in this much. That's crazy. Also, I'm gonna swap up my water because I'm out. <clears throat> Damn, I want to beat this today. I want to see what happens. I don't know how much longer is left, though. Because I assume the end is going to be, like, sunset. I think everybody's going to go crazy. Ooh, who should I continue with? Just to make sure everything is on the same timeline, I'll do the high school goals. I don't want to get too far ahead in terms of like the time of the day. 
Simon. The Red of Resurrection is the inception of this whole affair. Yoko and Mio decide to confront the man responsible for spreading rumors of it in the first place, Hiraki Araishi. They find him at his frequent stomping grounds, the Kurokikyo Cafe. We're in. Yaku Sa Sakazaki, 12 p.m. Kuru Kikyo Cafe. Oh, I see a stamp. You know, normally you'd be breaking school rules just by setting foot in a cafe. I'll be in hot water if you lied about having permission. I'll be in hot water if you lied about having permission from the police. Remember that. We know it'll be okay. So, what did you want to ask me? I want to get that sticker. Mockingbird number eight. A cafe. I've never been to one before. How exciting. It's pretty smelly inside because of the cigarette smoke, but... Yo, we're sitting so close to him. Ew. <clears throat> Yako, if you would. Right. We wanted to ask you about this. Why are we shooting him? Oh my. A curse stone. An Okami mask? That must mean the fool's possession. You two were at the school last night. Damn. There of all places. Yako, you're one of them. You're a curse bearer. Um, uh, please calm down, Mr. Adaishi. Your reaction is too intense. It's kind of scaring me. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm afraid I got ahead of myself. What is it you wanted to know about your curse stone? Hmm, what would be the best way to approach this? Let's Riz. It's just, a brilliant teacher like you must know an awful lot about these curse stones. Well, it's true that I'm likely the person most well-versed in the matter. You're the only one we can count on, Mr. Araishi. Won't you help us, please? Oh, am I now? In that case, there's no harm in hearing what you have to ask. Thank you. Let's see. Why is everything with the Rat of Resurrection and Seven Mysteries Cursed Stones happening now? <laughs> Taking an interest. Oh, oh. Taking an interest now that you've received one of the curses, have you? You sound like a researcher, starting your questioning with your subject's origins. Um, Mr. Araishi, you're not the one who triggered the curse, are you? No, I'm afraid I had nothing to do with that. Rather, I wasn't even attempting to do so in the first place. Completing the rite itself has nothing to do with my research. Then, do you know any of the ancient Onmyo? Onmyodo. 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 Then, do you know any of the ancient Onmyodo ritual known as the Feast of Shadows? What is that? Something from the occult? Miss Korosuzo, you look like the type to be interested in those things, but it's outside my field of expertise. Um, in that case. Why do you think the right and curses have appeared now? I believe this is intentional work of someone. Hmm? It's certainly not something that would happen by accident. Why is it that you want to know? Well, uh... He may not tell us anything else if we say that we're trying to stop the curse. We need to make something up. Right. <laughs> make something up! Well, you see... We just have such intellectual curiosity and, uh, think it could really help your research. I see. Now that you mention it. Seems like he's reluctant to answer. Hmm, then how about... Hmm. Uh, 
we did try to risk earlier, but like, you know, people love yapping. Um, then... What does that record of fates that you've been researching say about the Rider Resurrection? <laughs> I see. That's what you want to know. Allow me to first eluctuate, el elucidate? I've never seen that word in my life. Allow me to first elucidate you regarding the author of the Record of Fates. A special privilege, I might add, since I've yet to publish this on paper. Yeah, okay. The Record of Fates was written 200 years ago in the latter half of the Edo period. It was written by a skilled but little known Onmyoji called Simon Suchi Mikado. This is important stuff. If nothing else, remember this. Sim Simon Suchi Mikado. I've never heard of him. I'm sure you haven't. He was born into a famed Omiji family, but split away to practice forbidden arts in secret. He used whatever name was most convenient for the situation, so his real name barely exists in records. Or so it is written in the Record of Fates. Huh. As brilliant as C I don't want to say C hyphen men. It's sight. E I is sight. As brilliant as Simon was, he was also an eccentric. He delved into researching the Rider Resurrection, a legendary forbidden ritual that had never been completed. However, by involving himself with this forbidden ritual, he was expelled from his family and eventually found himself in Honjo in Edo. The Record of Fates was the writing of Simon recorded on the Rose of Edo. I see. So he wrote how to perform the rite himself. The Rite of Resurrection made use of Abe. Abe no Saime. The Rite of Resurrection made use of Abe no Saime's specialty, the Taizen Fukun ritual, a means of communicating with the afterlife. It uses soul drags to replicate the soul of a dead spirit that has to been called. Oh wow, I never knew something like that existed. Thus, it is thought the only ones who can use it are those with the ability to turn human souls into soul dregs in the first place. So the Rite of Resurrection calls for that ritual to be performed in advance. Then when the soul dregs are gathered and infused with the wish of whoever is performing the ritual, it can be completed. The contents written in the Records of Fates and then. There is no more? What about the seven mysteries or the curse stones? There's nothing written about them in the Records of Fates. The curse stones are separate from the Rite of Resurrection. The curse is one used to enable one who is unable to perform such rituals to be able to use the rite. Huh, that's similar to what Mio said, actually. Excuse me? Mr. Araishi? What is it, Miss Kurosodo? He published a theory before the incident took place. It's so that the Rite of Resurrection and Origin of the Seven Mysteries of Honjo are related somehow. What proof did you have of that? You really know your stuff. But about that? That was a somewhat sensationalized piece written for occult magazines. Oh, really? It was just nonsense, then. Not exactly. Rather... Not a complete fabrication. There is a basis for it. And that is? Well, I suppose there's no harm telling a couple students so passionate about this topic. Thank you. This is something I discovered from referencing numerous texts unrelated to the Record of Fates. It was just after Simon arrived in Honjo. There are records of a conflict over a ritual used to resurrect the dead in Honjo. A conflict over resurrecting the dead? I don't know the details. A man enticed the public with claims of a spell that could resurrect the dead, causing a conflict that ends tragically with nine dead. That is the only remaining reference. Nine people fighting over a resurrection ritual. I call this tragedy the Honjo Incident. It has long been a subject of my research. And I suspect that the Honjo Incident might be the very origin of the Seven Mysteries of Honjo. So, what you're saying is... The resurrection ritual at the root of the Honjo incident is the Simon's Rite of Resurrection. Yes, that is how the Record of Fates ties everything together. To put it in chronological order, first Simon brought the resurrection... To put it in chronological order, first Simon brought the Rite of Resurrection to Edo. We can assume that by this point, Simon was likely using a different name. 
Then in Honjo, nine people fought to the death over this right. The Honjo incident. After that, the incident was covered up by an interested party. After that, the incident was covered up by an interested party, preventing it from being fully recorded in history fully. Eventually, it was passed down in incomplete pieces, becoming known as the Seven Mysteries of Honjo. That's more or less the course of events. Okay. So then that means... That's why people are confusing the Seven Curses with the Nine Curse Stones. So that's how they're connected. Then, if I'm getting this right, the Seven Mysteries are basically required to get the soul dregs necessary for the right. <laughs> and there's more. With this most recent occurrence of the curse, I've become even more confident in my theory. You are? Yes, the reason for it being the resentful memories of the Seven Mysteries etched into those who received the cursed stones. Resentful memories? Yako, if you really are a curse bearer, then when you obtained your curse stone, you would have had a resentful memory imprinted in your mind. Oh, I did. Exactly. Those memories are what happened in the final moments of the nine who died in the Honjo incident. Broadly speaking, they involved dying while bearing some kind of deep resentment. The nine victims became the nine curse echoes, which over time came to be spoken of as the seven mysteries. Thus, gathering the resentful memories granted by the present curses and connecting them together. It will never reveal once and all. It will never reveal once and for all what happened during the Honjo incident. Huh. That's why you must tell me about the resentful memory of your fool's possession, Yako. Um. Yo, should I? Yeah, I think it's okay. We need all the information we can get. Okay, Mr. Araishi. I'll tell you all about the memory of the fool's possession. Excellent. So basically, it's about a woman who died falling from a Yakura tower at a festival. Hmm. Interesting. It's not that one, then. Not that one? What do you mean? Among the nine victims of the Honjo incident, that is to say, the nine curse echoes, one of them is Simon himself, or so I suspect. Huh? Simon was one of the victims at the Honjo incident too? Meaning an omijo, meaning an omyo, omyoji, omyoji, meaning an omyoji as powerful as him, also became a curse echo. Right. It would make sense that the curse stone tied to a curse echo like that would be special. The power of a curse stone is different based on the curse echo. Mio, Mio, then maybe with Simon's curse echo we could. Yes, we might be able to settle this whole situation. Hey, what are you two whispering about? Oh, nothing. Sorry. Mr. Raishi, how many of the resentful memories have you gathered so far? I have learned a number of them. The Evergreen Beach, the Foot Washing Mansion, the Everburning Lantern, and now the Fool's Possession makes four. Of those, the most important are the Foot Washing Mansion and the Evergreen Beach. What are they about? First, the foot washing mansion. An Omyoji appears distinctly in this one. Really? But not Simon, I'm afraid. A female. A female Omyoji who sought the right of resurrection. <laughs> okay. A female Omyoji who sought the right of resurrection due to her obsession with her personal appearance. Her legs, which she had always taken pride in, were striking with corruption after she was defeated by Simon. Her curse echo is notable for being particularly easy to fulfill the requirements necessary to use the curse. That detective did well to escape this one. So, a female Omioji and a rivalist Simon was involved in the Honjo incident. That certainly is interesting. Next, the Evergreen Beach. This Kirk echo- Kirk. <laughs> this curse echo is from a craftsman of Netsuke carvings named Jinkichi who was hanged for spreading baseless rumors. He apparently spoke of something that granted the ability to bring back the dead. The Rite of Resurrection! Precisely. 
This man Jinjiki. Jinkichi. Precisely. This man Jinkichi must have been in contact with Simon. If I could just collect all those memories, everything will be revealed, and the truth of the seven mysteries will be mine. That is the knowledge I desire. Meaning, you need to gather as much information as you can from the curse bearers. Precisely. I have an agreement to exchange information with these detectives, but they might even not but they might not even find they're the curse bearers, so I must take measures of my own. You know who else needs to take things into their own hands? The people who are not subscribed. Because guys, we're five hours in this stream. This is what my voice sounds like normally. And this is what it sounds like when I try. I'll play for one more hour. I don't know how much I have left in the game. I probably got like six hours left. I don't know. We're, we're hitting like the almost climax. Okay. Five hours in the stream. I have to run some ads. If you want to avoid the ad, all you must do is subscribe. Click subscribe. See if you got a Prime sub available. It's free. Otherwise, um, skip a coffee. It's five bucks. Get some water. Get a snack. I'll see some of you guys in a few. There you go. A little present for you. I'm going to eat my cookie. Back to it. Back to that paranormal side grinds it. <clears throat> Another thing. Yes? You never really finished about what the trigger for all this was. Well, um, <clears throat> I don't know. Really? He knows. He knows. He knows. You're not hiding something from us, are you? It has something to do with how you obtained the record of fates, right? How did you really get a hold of the records of fates? To tell you the truth, we're in a race against time. It could be a disaster if we don't hurry. What are you talking about? Someone left a warning that at sundown today, they would use the curse to kill a lot of people. The one who left that message is the culprit behind the Nejima murders from 20 years ago. What? Something so terrible will happen. I won't allow potentially hundreds of people to become victims of a curse. I'll do anything in my power to stop it. He got it from the soap factory. Mr. Adaishi. Please, tell us everything you know. I'm sorry, but I truly don't know anything. The truth is, I was given the record of fates by a woman. A woman? An old woman? Well, her voice sounded like a woman's, but I didn't actually see what she looked like. One month ago, while I was investigating at night, I suddenly heard a formless voice. A woman's voice? It said, I entrust you with this ancient manuscript and the rite of resurrection held within its pages. Spread rumors of this ritual as far and wide as you can in the coming month. And before I knew it, an old document had fallen down at my feet. Similar to how the, the soap lady is trying to spread rumors about her being a witch, it's literally them. It's Big Corpa. One month? She specified the time period. 
I was told if I did that, I could study the manuscript as much as I pleased. I wanted so badly to verify its authenticity. I ended up accepting. I hadn't heard anything from the voice since then. It must have had you spread rumors in order to strengthen the power of the curse. To tie together the curse and the desire to seek out the right. This makes it likely that the owner of the voice is the mastermind behind all of this. Hence, I went public with the records of fate. Kyaku and the occult magazines immediately jumping at the news was a financial boom for me. Huh? Kihaku? As in Hihaku soaps? Right? I, I mean, no! That that's not important! Just some personal business. He leaked! After that, I waited, trying to predict what would occur in a month's time. That's when the curse began. Those are all the details I have. Tell us about the soaps! Very well. I've told you this much. I may as well give you one more thing. Thank you. What might it be? About Simon's record of fates. There is a sort of continuation to it. Another document called the Record of Fates Yin Scroll. A continuation? Actually, a section written in Simon's own hand was appended to the... Actually, a section written in Simon's own handwriting was appended in the manuscript. According to which, after the Honju incident, Simon lamented such a calamity taking place. He apparently wrote the addendum for the event that the tragedy became its own curse. It seems he had an idea that the victims of the Honjo incident would turn into cursed echoes and be used to gather soul drinks. It supposedly details how to handle any trouble that occurs as a result of the Rite of Resurrection. Really? Hold on a second. Don't you find that strange? What's the matter, Miss Sakizaki? You think my information is inaccurate? If Simon died in the Honjo incident, then he couldn't have written an addendum. You really don't get it, do you? Huh? Am I wrong? Have you forgotten the ability Simon possessed? Of course not. He could use the Rite of Reser- Oh. You're telling me Simon used it on himself? The Rite of Resurrection can be carried out in advance so that it activates when the soul dregs are gathered together. Then it is not possible. Then, is it not possible that Simon himself was resurrected by the Rite after it all took place? But he'd still have to collect the soul dredges needed to use the Rite. Yes, and that's why they died. They ate others besides Simon. What? They died in the Honjo incident for their soul dregs. That sounds like it's the same as what's happening now. That's why I need the resentful memories. To learn the truth. I get it now. The issue at hand is that the Yin Scroll and the Record of Fates were supposed to have been passed down as a set. When I received the Record of Fates, the Yin Scroll was gone. Only this information was left. Supposedly, Simon's blood descendants guarded it as they passed it down across generations. It seems that over the long history, the two documents became separated and the scroll's location lost as the family line branched. Simon has descendants, so there's someone out there related to him by blood, even now? Yes, in fact, I tried to trace the line as far as I could. He wasn't as well known- He wasn't a well-known Onmyoji to begin with, so a detailed family tree does not exist. It seems likely that the use of the manuscript has been long forgotten, only being passed down out of tradition. And since they aren't even aware of what they have, tracking it down is quite tricky indeed. I wish I could ask whoever that voice belonged to about the Yin Scroll. I'm sure you do. So basically, in the Record of Fates Yin Scroll, Simon himself wrote about ways to handle the curse and the right, yes? Yes, that's right. I've been searching for it all this time, but I haven't found a single lead. So if you two find out anything about other resentful memories or Yin Scroll, tell me immediately. You owe me that much for telling you all this, do you not? That's the real extent of everything I know. Yes, I understand. Thank you for your help. If you bring me some useful information, I'll take it as... 
If you bring me some useful information, I'll take into consideration for your school grades as well. <laughs> Got him. I love how we're getting so much, like, lower explanation. Yaku Sakazaki. 1 p.m. Street. We learned a lot. So, to sum it up, there was a tragic incident with people cursing each other for the Rider Resurrection in the Edo period as well. And the Record of Fates, Yen Scroll, may have info we want, since it details how to stop the right. I think that's about it. Right. If we could just find the Yen Scroll, we might be able to learn how to settle this situation. But even Mr. Adaishi didn't have any leads on where it is. How do we start looking for it? Someone involved in this now must have some connection to it, I think. I have a feeling the mastermind who awakened the curse is involved, too. Right. So, Mio, what are we going to do next? Good question. It may be best to get the information we just learned to Inspector Tsutsumi. We got a, we got a pretty big clue from hearing about the records of Fate's Yen Scroll. Mr. Tsutsumi might more... Mr. Tsutsumi might know more about it. Should we go back to school then? Yeah, that's our point of contact after all. Whoever's behind that voice that gave Mr. Araishi the record of fates? That must be the mastermind, don't you think? Yeah, and you said it sounded like it belonged to a woman. Whoever it is, I bet they're scary. Huh? You don't sound like the Yaku I know. Then let's catch him and make him spill the beans. I thought you'd say something like that. Really? I guess I'm just not really feeling that confident right now. I understand. I don't know if it's related to that woman behind the voice, but I'm also interested in the female Omiyoji who was the rival of Simon. Oh, that reminds me, Mio. You know what's nearby here, don't you? Hmm? Oh, you mean where Miyochi... Yeah, where it happened. I was going there every day to leave flowers, even though they always get cleared away anyways. I'm sure it must be hard to be reminded of Michio's death all the time. Oh, that reminds me. Yaku? Yeah? When you asked me to do the spirit board two days ago, did you come here that day too? Yeah. I left some flowers before going to school. Why? Did anything seem different that day? What's this all of a sudden? Though, now that you mention it... That day, I suddenly felt lightheaded and ended up passing out for a little bit. But then I came to right away and felt fine, so I didn't think anything of it. Is Michio possessing me? Because at the beginning of this morning, I was passed out at the candy store, and I had, like, come to. Uh-oh. Because she did say, possession is rare, and, like, full control when being possessed is even rarer, but it's more common when you have a connection with the victim and the ghost, or spirit, not ghost. Ghost is a bad word. But I came to you right away and felt fine, so I didn't think anything of it. I see. That's all I was wondering about. Thanks. Huh? Excuse me. You girls over there. Whoa. It's this guy. Sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but something you said caught my attention. Um, and who might you be? I'm Yutaro Namigaki. Or, I, I should probably tell you. Until yesterday, I was a curse bear. That should clear things up. A curse bear? Oh, you don't need to be scared. I've already given up the curse stone of the foot washing mansion. The foot washing mansion? So you're the one Inspector Tsutsumi was talking about. Ah, you already know Inspector Tsutsumi. That makes this simple. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, hey. You're... In the driver's seat. 
Yaku? Yes, wait, what? Just now, was was I doing something? Dude, Miochi is possessing Yaku! I'm telling you! Um, sorry. Mr. Namigaki, what might be the matter? Right, I actually wanted to discuss something with you two. Would you come with me if you have a little time? Discuss something with us? You were talking about Machio Shiraishi, right? It's related to that. Huh? I'm sure you would learn a few things yourselves. If not, the later is fine. I'll be waiting around Ryo Goku Bridge. Something rubs me the wrong way about this, but he mentioned Michio. What do we do? Um, go to school first? He's gonna kill us. Sorry, but there's something we gotta take care of. We all have to pass. Uh-oh. Is that so? Well, that's too bad. I'm in no rush, so I'll be waiting at Riguku Bridge if you change your minds. Um, he doesn't have his curse anymore. Dang it. Should I go to the bridge with him? I'll try and go to the bridge, just to see what happens. Let's talk to you, Toto. Well, I suppose we may as well hear what it is you have to say. Glad to hear it. Then shall we relocate elsewhere? He's gonna kill us! Yoko Sakazaki, 1 p.m. Ryo Goku Bridge. Okay, at least there's other people here. He's he's not gonna kill us. So, what did you want to discuss with us? Let's see. How do I put this? I'll tell you straight. I want you two to use your curse stones to bring Michio Shiraishi back from the dead. What? What? It's why I was pursuing the right of resurrection in the first place. Unfortunately, I had to give him my curse stone before I could succeed. But you two are curse bearers of some kind of connection to her. Which means this is the perfect opportunity for me to ask you for this. Um, well, I'm sorry this is all so sudden. I still don't understand why you would want this. What exactly is your relationship to Michio? Well, we met bravely once. I was so sad to hear the news of her death the other day. Right? Well, it would be great if we could bring Michio back. But we've already decided not to use the Rite of Resurrection. Is that so? It seems, however, that we share a goal. I wouldn't mind collecting the soul dredges for you if you gave me your curse stone, you know? We'll have to decline that as well. Our goal is to stop this curse. Why is Yako gone? Why is Yako gone? I see. Well, that's too bad. I suppose I'll have to give up on the curse stones. Thank you for your understanding. Also, the people in the background are leaving. Well, they're back. Okay. You. I thought he was a little suspicious, but he left without making a fuss. But why does he want to bring Michio back? Huh? Yako? Uh-oh. Did she go somewhere while we were talking? Uh-oh. She's gonna kill him. I finally caught up to you. 
I don't know if you noticed me following you or not. But leading me to a secluded place? You got guts. I'm sorry, but I'll be taking your curse stone. Either you hand it over, or I'll have to take it by force. Dude, why is he doing the motion? You don't, you don't have the power anymore, jackass. She's a ghost! What? What? Why? Are, are you... No, no, no! She, she's here again! I don't understand! But wait! It, it was just an accident! I swear! I, I didn't mean to! That, 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 that is why I was trying to bring you back! <laughs> You're already too late. No. That can't be the end. No. Bad ending? Okay, I know the curse that um, Yako is holding is where you listen to the sound she plays for 30 seconds. Maybe I gotta mute the sound again. How was it credits? That can't be the end. What? After this. Fumichika Nijima went on to use the power of his curse to commit mass murder, shocking the public with the unprecedented tragedy. And from that day on, Yako Sakazaki was never heard from again. Ending 1. Michio's Grudge There's multiple endings! <laughs> Oh, wait, oh, wait, because Shoujo had an ending, too. I remember. Yeah, this was Shoujo's ending. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, okay. Good thing I went back. Ending one. Wait, was this an ending? Oh, no, it wasn't an ending. I we gonna go back to Shoujo? But no, but he died. He, he like, he's like, dead dead. Okay, okay, okay. I'm excited. So this probably won't open up until I complete stuff up top. Let's do cop perspective. Standing by. Standing by. At the Shiraishi home, Tsutsumi and Erio learned the truth about many things, including the death of Kan Kichiro Iwai. They hurried to the high school after learning that Michio Shiraishi knew the whereabouts of Najima's hideout. Oh, so this is where we're gonna run into the girls again. Okay. We're all split up. Got it. Tetsuo Tsutsumi, 1 p.m. Komagata High School. Um, boss! I just talked to the Sumida police. Oh, what now? They found an abandoned vent in the Chiba Mountains that looked like it had been in an accident. They couldn't lift any fingerprints from it, but they found blood splatters in the front. And guess what? The blood is a perfect match for Michio's. Oh, uh -huh. so it must be the van that met you. You got it. It's all thanks to Yoshimi that we were able to find that out. The license plate had been removed, though, and they even scripted the verification. The license plate had been removed, though, and they even scripted the vehicle identification number. It'll take a while to identify the owner. Now they're trying to figure out if the van was slight. Now they're trying to figure out if the van was sighted anywhere between the scene of the crime and where it was dumped. Got it. 
Thanks for the report. Ooh, another sticker! Mockingbird number 15. It's nice that we got permission to use the school as our base of operations. The principal and head teacher were a little reluctant at first, but they were convinced that it would help the investigation. Dealing with all this must be a real headache for those guys. I should thank them again later. Where are the girls at? Okay, let's talk to Eddie. By the way, boss, we have confirmed that Michio died in a vehicular collision. But are we sure there was really an accident? Good question. I was wondering the same thing. The damage done by the collision indicates that the driver was traveling at a considerable speed, but there was no brake marks to be found. Exactly. Which suggests there may have been intentional targeting Michio. Then what was the motive, you think? Who would have a reason to kill Michio? The first person that comes to mind is Kankichiro Iwai. After all, he... After all, she knew about his crimes. But then, Iwai was supposedly able to control Michio by imitation of, intimidation alone. There's also that teacher who was taking advantage of Michio, Kohei Jinuchi. But to say he killed her to stop people from finding out that he was blackmailing her doesn't seem likely somehow. You're right. Though both of them have fallen prey to her curse. That's true. In that case, it's quite possible she'll be able to extract revenge on the person she... It's quite possible she'll also decide to extract revenge on the person who ran her over. Not just possible. She may have already done it last night. Just like with Iwai. Is there anything else that could have served as a motive? That talisman, maybe. The one Yoshimi was looking for? Oh, do you think someone wanted to take it from her? Well, the talisman was found in her remains, nor in her house. Hmm, but doesn't a hit and run seem like too drastic a measure to go for a little talisman? Then, in the end, it might have just been an unfortunate accident after all. Yeah, it sure looks that way. Either way, what we need now is a testimony from Michio herself. With a bit of luck, we may be able to ask her what happened during the crash ourselves. Yeah, I can't wrap my head around that particular development. I still have my doubts that it'll be so easy. Either way, we won't be able to do this unless Mio and Yoko turn up. I'd rather have them come here sooner rather than later, but... I guess we'll just have to wait. Shall we head inside? Alright then! <clears throat> oh, hey, Ariel. I wanted to ask you something. Ah, uh, yeah, I was. Jeez, you're an eager beaver. I haven't even said what it was yet. Uh, right. Well, was it then? Can't remember what you had for dinner last night? Looks like that agent over there is having some trouble with his pen. So if you got a spare, go lend it to him. And for the record, I had Katsudon last night. No need to worry about me getting senile just yet. Um, I know I look like a genius, but I didn't think I came across the type of guy to carry space. I almost did that one shot. <coughs> um, I know I look like a genius, but I didn't think I came across as the type to carry spare pens in my person. You? A genius? You're dreaming. But if his pen just stopped working, he can get it going again with a little bit of nail polish remover. Nail polish remover? Yeah, you know. What you use to remove nail polish? Never used it before? N do I look like I would've? Don't make me sound crazy for not having used that stuff. I doubt you have either. Oh no, I've used it alright. Did you know that it can remove oil-based ink stains? Which is also why it can be used to fix old, dried up pen nibs. Pen nibs. <laughs> Nibs. <laughs> Mods. 
Whatever's in there that removes the ink also doubles as a way to unclog pens. Huh. Good to know. Still to... Huh. Good to know. Still wouldn't call you a genius, but it's something. You gotta make sure the remover doesn't mix with the ink, though, or it'll ruin it. Doesn't that defeat the purpose? Not to worry. I don't have nail polish remover on me right now, anyway. Oh, no problem, then. That doesn't fix anything. A long story short, I don't have a spare pen. Geez, alright, I'll let him know. Boss, I thought we were going to wait for a meal in the school. Oh no, are we going in the school? Alright, let's go wait inside the school. I'm sure they'll be here any moment. We're gonna meet up with the girls at school. Wait, that's- that's Michio in the thumbnail. I'll see you again. The record of fates he and Scroll may contain a way to put a stop to the curse. Yako and Mio head back to Komagata High School to share this information with Satsumi. I was right about her being possessed! Yako Sakazaki, 1 p.m. Komagata High School. Ain't that interesting. The record of fate's yin scroll, huh? Well done, you two! That's some good info you got from that teacher! Thank you. Good job, boss! Operation Schoolgirl was a success! Adio, stop making things sound weird. Anyways, let's share what we found at Michio Shiraishi's house. Yes, please. Yes. A man named Iwai kidnapped sacrifices for black magic? And Michio helped with the kidnapping? And Mr. Jinochi used that to blackmail her. Wait, Michio was evil? No. Based on the report and looking at the circumstances surrounding the deaths of Jinochi and Iwai, if Michio Shiraishi did it, it would make sense. Furthermore, there are signs that Michio Shiraishi wanted someone to notice. Huh? Really? The ribbon that was left at the scene of the Koi. <clears throat> the ribbon that was left at the scene of the Koi's death is proof of that. Mio, I'm guessing you know that already. Ah, uh, yes, ever since this morning. But there's one piece of information I need. But I think we're near her limit. Oh, I'm saying mine, but it's Yako. Mio is sus. She thinks we're the imposter. She knows. But I think we're near her limit. Oh, same thing. Oopsie. So, if we get this record of fate's yin scroll, we'll be able to dispel the curse? Yes. The source of this curse is a tragic event called the Honjo Incident that dates back to the Edo period. An omyoji named Simon Tsuchimakiro is said to have recorded a way to deal with the curse. So I think there may be a way to dispel the curse. Right. I'll... I'll leave... Okay. I thought I said learn. Right. I'll leave how to approach this to you, Mio. I'll check with the Paranormal Affairs Bureau as well, but please make finding the record of Fatih and Scroll your top priority. Understood. Dude, I hate how it's it's Yako looking around. It makes me feel more paranoid. They they know it's me. They know it's me. Even though okay, we know it's me, but like I'm not I'm not evil. And how do we go about looking for it? It's possible the descendants of Simon have inherited it, but I don't think you're It's possible that the descendants of Simon have inherited it, but I don't think they're aware of its existence. It'd be nice if we had a clan chest or something to go off of. Maybe we'll have to ask Paranormal Affairs. 
that reminds me, Mio, was the Western black magic used by EY and Nejima really just an imitation? Huh? Why are you asking me? Oh, uh, boss said you knew about this sort of thing. D do you not? Um, well, I mean, I have some knowledge, but... How strange. I don't think I've ever told anyone that. It's okay, Mio. No one's judging you. Right, but it still feels a little weird. So, what's your opinion on it as someone familiar with Western black magic? Hmm. If I could have a look at that green more, I could be sure, but... Based on their methods, I'd say they imitated black magic popular around 300 years ago. It was advertised as magic anyone could use, and was employed as camouflage to evade witch hunters. It's notable, because they purposely required living sacrifices to make it difficult to disprove its authenticity. Wow. You know so much, I'm impressed. It totally matches with the vibe you're not- <coughs> Wow. You know so much, I'm impressed. It totally matches with the vibe you've got going on. What do you mean by that? Don't worry. Have some confidence. Oh, right. Thanks, I guess? Dude, they're rizzing! If that black magic is just an imitation, then we probably don't have to worry about it. I'm just glad things aren't getting even more confusing than they already are! Alright, about the mastermind, I had an idea. Huh? What is it? This is about the chairwoman of Hihako Soaps, isn't it? You mentioned her, you were telling us... You mentioned... <coughs> when? This is about the chairwoman of Hihako Soaps, isn't it? You mentioned her when we were... T when you... I'm just putting words that I'm not seeing. My brain is auto-filling words. <coughs> This is about the chair one of Hihako Soaps, isn't it? You mentioned her when you were telling us about that EY person. Yep. Whether the goal is to restore youth or to resurrect someone, she's got her hands all over this. She has money too. It would also match Hideki Araishi's account of a woman's voice. An evil business lady with supernatural powers. A classic setting. If only we could confirm these powers of hers were actually real. We'll need to keep an eye on her. I'll tell HQ to look into her. Now then, if we're nearing the limit, I'll stop beating her in the bush. Time to tell it to you straight. Yako... Yako Sabai... <laughs> Yako Sakazaki? What? Me? Yes? Take all your curse stone. And give it to Mio. My curse stone? It's just been in my pocket all this time. Thanks. I'm just going to borrow it for a second. Well? Yes. There are soul dregs inside after all. <gasps> what? I killed someone? No way! What? How did this happen? I, I didn't do anything. I swear. You have to believe me. It's okay. We know. Yako, calm down and listen to what I'm about to tell you. But, but... There's no mistake that Jinochi and Iwai were killed by that curse stone. But the one who committed the act is... The ghost of Michio Shiraishi that is inside you. Yako Sakazaki. What? What? Inside me? What? What do you mean? What do you mean? It's okay, Yako. Please calm down and listen. You've been possessed, Yako. By Machio's ghost? But what? It probably happened when you were offering flowers at the site of the accident. Filled with regret, her lingering ghost reacted to the presence of her old friend and entered you, Yako. No, no way! You mean, Michio's ghost is inside me? 
I've explained this once before, but just because you've been possessed doesn't mean that you lose control of yourself. Wait, I'm a killer? Like, for real? Is not the ghost? Normally, the mind will reject such attempts and it do nothing more than affect one's mood or energy levels. But Machio had a powerful spirit sense to begin with. And because she was your friend, your mind was open to accepting Michio's spirit. So for those reasons, your minds merged without an issue. It's going to be difficult to separate her from you at this point. Which also means it will be difficult to guide her spirit to the afterlife. No way. We've merged? Me and Michio's minds are... But I don't feel different at all. I, I mean, I'm I'm me, I think. That's because after she merged with you, Michio started to believe she was you as well. As a ghost as a ghost possessing you, she's not fully conscious, only really a jumble of vague memories. Still, there are traces of her consciousness and memories of Michio Shiraishi. You have been acting a little different from usual. You'd also sometimes react when coming into contact with things with powerful influence. Really? That having been said, if we don't have proper understanding of the regrets Michio Shiraishi had when she died and why, it would be difficult to separate her from you. That's why I didn't say anything. I'm sorry. If I carelessly provoked her ghost, it could have risked causing her to dig even deeper into your mind. Oh no. When we mentioned limits earlier, we mean that by letting things proceed like this, there's a possibility that you will join completely making it impossible to separate her ghost from you. If that happens, you'll never be able to tell which of your thoughts belong to her and which belong to you. What? Th that's so scary! You mean I won't be myself anymore? Oh, but if it's Michio, then maybe it wouldn't be so bad? Oh, I don't know! What should I do? Oh, uh, but... It was actually Michio who used the curse stone while I was unaware, wasn't it? Doesn't that mean her ghost has already taken over my body? Well, about that. I think that's probably the effect of the curse amplifying murderous impulses and the influence of the Feast of Shadows. While you were sleeping, the ghost's powers were boosted. And strengthened by the feast, Michio's consciousness surfaced and took control of your body. That's... Then that means... I was the one who killed them. I cursed them both. Oh... Yako, no! You're being controlled! Right, Inspector? Yeah, that's right. It's likely she'd be recognized as not being responsible for the crime due to the possession. It's not something you can control. No need to worry about that. No, you're wrong. I wanted to kill them too. Those feelings must have come out. It's not only Machio's fault. I mean, when I learned that Machio didn't commit suicide, I wish that all the cruel adults around me would just die. I had the cursed one with me, and I wanted to get revenge for Machio at the... I had the cursed one with me. And I wanted to give revenge for Michio if the chance came. That's how I felt. Yako, because, because, Michio wasn't able to escape her terrible situation. It was so hard. It wouldn't be unusual for someone to take their own life. And I, I had this curse stone. I made Michio get revenge all by herself. Michio tried so hard to keep on living in silence. And I treated those feelings like they were worthless. I should have done it myself right away. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Machio. That's why? I killed them. Dude, just blame the ghost. Machio. Ooh, what voice should I give her? Yako? There you are. Oh, hi, Machu. 
What's up with you? You had me worried sick since you haven't been coming to school lately. It feels like it's been forever. I'm glad you seem to be doing good. Yeah, sorry. And I'm sorry I didn't tell you why. I've always regretted it. Oh, come on. You're acting like we are buds. You tell me if anything is making you sad, and I'll take care of them. <laughs> Thanks, Yoko. Actually, I'm here because there's something I wanted to tell you. Really? What's the matter? You can tell me anything. Well, the truth is, I did something unforgivable to an innocent man. Saying that I was forced to and didn't have a choice doesn't undo it. I'm sorry. I feel so guilty. What? I've done so much that I can't take back. All because I was weak. There's no escaping the hell that I've created for myself. I couldn't handle it anymore. I started thinking about killing him and dying myself. Neither of us deserve to live in this world. No, what? But something went wrong. And that's why I died with regrets. But thanks to you, I finished what I wanted to do. Thank you. And I'm sorry for dragging you into this. Wh what Wait! You don't need to apologize! It's only now that I realize. And I know how selfish it is. Okay, this didn't happen. This is in my brain. But I hope you remember the time we spent together as friends. And how we were able to be together at the end. Please, don't forget me. Huh? No! Michio, wait! They're exercising me. Michio, no! Huh? You're awake? Do you feel okay? I'm sorry I had to spring that all on you, Yako. What? Is- is this... Are we in the classroom? Was I dreaming? I'm sorry to rush this along while you're still gathering your feelings, but... We need to hear what Michio Shiraishi has to say now. Right. And so, after considering what to do, it is true that Michio's consciousness has mixed with yours. But if I summoned her ghost, we may be able to establish some communication. Oh, I understand. Bad news! So you thought to use the spirit board again? Yep, I have a hunch. I think the spirit we called last time may have actually been Michio herself. Really? You think? And that her spirit has been close to you ever since then. Then let's do it. I think we should, and I want to hear from her. Very well. I have no idea if this will work during daytime, but let's give it a try. Are you ready? Wait a minute. Sorry, I need a little time. No, it's okay. Let me know when you're ready. Thanks. I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. Do you remember how to do it? Place your finger on the 10 yen coin. I'm in. Right, like this. Good. Now do as I do. Oh, Spectre the Spirit Board, please visit us. Oh, Spectre the Spirit Board, please visit us. Please tell us if you were there. Yo, she's there! It's here. Now, is it the spirit of Michio? Yako, would you ask the spirit? All right. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, are you the spirit of Michio Shiraishi? Yes! Oh, it said yes. Don't be so sure. Some spirits like to play tricks. Can you try asking it a question only Michio would know the answer to? 
Question only Machia would know the answer to. Let's see then. Oh, Spectre the Spirit Board. How much did the ribbon I bought with Machio cost? Four hundred and ninety yen. That's right. Well, it seems we have the right spirit. Okay. Can I have you ask her a question? Sorry, Eddie on the back. <laughs> He's like, I did not sign up for this. Okay. What do you want me to ask her? I want you to ask about the location of Fumichiya's and Najima's hideout and the location of the talisman as well. Okay. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Please tell me the location of Fumichika Najima's hideout. Don't say no. Please! Terrible things will happen if he isn't captured soon. I'm sure it's painful to try and remember, but you're the only one who can help us, Michio. Please! It moved! This is an address. She's giving us the address. Amazing. Thank you, Michio. Okay. I have the address. Thank you. Alright, Adio. Gonna move on and check out that address. Yes, sir. I'll contact HQ and order a simultaneous house search and sweep of the area. I just hope this information is accurate. I know it is. Wait, I wanted to ask you about the talisman. Oh, okay. We get to ask. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Do you know where the talisman that you had is? She does know. I wonder if we can find a I wonder if we can find a way to narrow it down. I'll try asking. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board, did you carry around the talisman with you at all times? So, she did carry it with her. Wrong button, sorry. So, she did carry it with her. Then, did you have it with you when you had your accident? Huh? She had it with her. No, wait! Earlier the, the, sorry, earlier they said the talisman was on her body. Conflict of interest. But, there was nothing resembling a talisman in the articles left behind at the scene. So that means someone took it with them and ran off with it before the scenes were investigated. But who would do that? This would mean someone knew Michio had died before the police did. The first person to discover and report it was the caretaker of the apartment building next door. So we check with them. Let's see. The other possibility I can think of is... The perpetrator of the hit and run. But it was a hit and run. Wouldn't they have run away? It might be possible they came back, driven by fear or something else. Even if so, they didn't report it and went through her belongings. But, but to only take the talisman... Seems hard to believe. Unless they were after the talisman from the very beginning. How likely is that? Is the talisman really that special? Eddie mentioned the same thing, but to run someone over just to take something from them. It's possible they just picked up the talisman after hitting her for no particular reason. By the way, if it really was a hit and run, then I hope they get caught. It's possible she remembers something after seeing that picture of the car. Then, shall we try asking? I'll try. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. Do you know who was behind the hit and run? She says she knows. That's a relief. If she hadn't known... Huh? In order for Michio's spirit to find peace, we need as much detailed information about what happened as possible. 
We can't send her off to the afterlife if we don't know what happened when she died. This isn't like a forced exorcism. Huh? So that's what it'll take. Alright, I'll try asking. Right. Oh, Spectre the Spirit Board. Who was the one who ran you over? I hope she knows the name. I wonder. Namagaki. Glasses man. N A M I G A K I? Huh. Namagaki? What? You mean Yutaro Namagaki? You two know him. We talked with him after we left the cafe. He used to be a curse bearer, right? Oh, I see. So that's why Yako had that reaction when she saw him. What? Come to- wrong, wrong voice. <clears throat> Come to think of it, that guy said he wanted to talk about Machio. What? What the hell is he planning without his curse stone? He said he'd be waiting me- He said he'd be waiting- He said he'd be waiting near- Ryo- Ryo Goku. Ryo Goku. He said he'd be waiting near Ryo Goku Bridge. Got it. I'll join you there once we're done. He's the bastard who killed Michio? Yako. This should be enough information. We can release Michio from her suffering now. Let's do it. Alright. Oh, say goodbye. Oh, Spectre of the Spirit Board. No. Michio. Thank you. You helped us. You know? I'm so sorry I didn't know about it all. Your family. The kidnapping. Mr. Junochi. I'm so sorry. It must have been so hard. Not that I could understand, but I'm sure it was so hard. I mean, of course you would want revenge. I wanted it too. We've all done things that we wish we could take back. But, I'm glad that at least... But, I'm glad that I at least know the truth. Yako. There's so much I want to say, but... That's enough. Let me just ask you one last thing. Someday, can we hang out again? Imagine she said no. You mean it? Okay. It's a promise. Have you asked everything you wanted? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to guide Michio's spirit now. Yeah, it's about time to say goodbye. Michio, with this, I'll finally be able to free you. Hey, Yako? Yeah? You never accepted the idea that Michio took her own life. I'm glad you never stopped trying to find the truth. Yeah. You're right. Even though I didn't realize just how hard things were for her. Mio? Sorry. It's just... Michio. She was taken advantage of by so many of the adults around her. She was taken advantage of by so many of the adults around her. She put up with so much. I should have tried and talked with her more. I know how you feel. Thanks, Mio. It hurts thinking about all the things I could have done. Why did this have to happen to someone so kind and hardworking? It feels, like, it feels like she was ill-fated to the very end. It's just too cruel. But even then, she didn't even tell me about this stuff. 
and she let herself worry more about revenge than living. I'm mad at her for that. Sure, I should have noticed something was wrong, but come on. Uh, what was she thinking? Seriously. I mean, seriously. Am I really that unreliable? Of course it'll help you get your revenge, you idiot. I don't care how you changed or whatever. I just wanted you to live. Yako. I'll take responsibility for what's been done. But one day, if we meet on the other side, I'm gonna have to give her a good punch. Then I'll tell her she's the real fool's possession. Or something. Then we'll hang out like always. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Alright. I'm sending her off, okay? Oh, wait! Look, the coin. It moved to no all on its own. You're right. When did it do that? It seems she still has something keeping her here. Yako, do you have any idea what Michio wants? Me? Oh. Please, don't forget me. I think she told me that she didn't want me to forget. I see. Then... Michio? If you can hear my voice... Let your feelings that you won't ever forget her be known. Show it through an action. What? Do something that shows you won't forget. Um, screenshot! I will never forget this moment. <laughs> I thought screenshot was the answer. A video. Come on! <laughs> Um, never forget. I can't reach the number one. Okay, anyway. <laughs> There's something that shows you won't forget? Show it through an action. Okay, I might be DOM. I'll take another picture. Okay, I'm looking it up. I'm stuck. I'm stuck! And you know what I'll do? I'll run an ad. Because it's six hours anyway. Okay, paranormal side. Also, I only can stream for another hour. I, I don't know how much is left. Baron or... Oh, wait. Do I have the... I didn't... Oh, wait. Right here. Paranormal Insight Complete Walkthrough.
Keiyako Sakazaki's route. It says save the game. Really? Really? I think taking a picture would have fit so much better. Devs, get on it. Okay, saving the game is a bit more obvious, but I think taking a picture also makes sense. Thank you. So, I don't really want you to punch me, so live a long life, okay? I'll see you later. Okay, guys. I'm gonna pause here for now. How much is left? Okay. It looks like I have, like, three hours left, because... I assume I'm like 80% through the walkthrough. So, I'm gonna pause here for today. Wait, can I actually save? Save. Okay. So, we learned a lot today. A lot more lore onto, like, what is actually causing the phenomena to happen. Um, Yako was possessed? <gasps> a lot happened today. I think I only got, like, three hours left, so maybe I'll finish this the next one. I'm so glad I came back to this. There's so much, like, lore that we learned today. Also, so much more to explore. I will finish this tomorrow. I have a totally free day tomorrow. I will finish this tomorrow. Do not worry. There we go. So that was Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Honjo. Part 3. Dang, that was six hours. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, so guys, I'm gonna wrap up stream here for today, because I have things to do and I have to eat before I do said things. So, if anybody wants to do calligraphy, redeem so now. If you use your channel once, or if you subscribe, I will write your name. Do so now. Any redeemers? Dude, my throat is killing me. Okay, let's get some happy music on. This music is scary. Dang, this game is so freaking good. My only gripe is that it's basically all just... How do you say? Dialogue. Oh my god, this is so loud. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The game is basically all just dialogue. Which, like, it's fun if you're playing on your own, but, like, it's... It's very exhausting for me. It's road hearts. Okay, I think... I will wrap up stream here for today. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Any shadows, lurkers? Thank you for watching. I will finish this tomorrow. The final day of Follow Through February, even though... Um, we didn't do Spirit Fairer. We'll save Spirit Fairer for a rainy day. For a rainy day. Guys, if you want more things to watch, go check out my most recent YouTube video. It is, I ranked the entire Mario Kart DLC. Hashtag real, hashtag not clickbait. I ranked all 48 tracks. And if you aren't already... Um, go subscribe to my YouTube channels, daily clips on the clips channel, and then weekly stream highlights on the main. Go sub to both. Do it now. <laughs> okay. I will be live tomorrow at 11 a.m. Because in the morning, I want to do some editing. 
And then, yeah, we'll finish Paranormal Site. And then, plan is simple. You guys want to see my whole plan for this year? <laughs> can you even screenshot that? Wait. Or is it too motion blur? Yeah, you literally can't read it. <laughs> you can't see through the paper either. March is going to be a good month. I have a... It's either a week or two of planned stream content. And no narcs, no leaks. And you know what? I'll leak what it starts with. It starts with P. Peason, obviously. Peason is in the title of the week theme. Okay. Yeah, so that's... February's almost over. It's 28th. It's a leap year. Weird, huh? Okay. I will see you guys tomorrow at 11. Goodbye. Okay, yeah, let's play the outro music. Dang, six hours of voice acting? Ugh. No, okay, genuinely BS that to progress that one scene you had to save the game. That was pretty good, but taking a picture so much makes so much more sense. Well plan for this week, um tomorrow finishing paranormal site, Friday sub only stream. I might be able to stream this weekend, I don't know yet. Also, clippers, get to work. I need more clips. You guys are slacking. If you clip the most, you get VIP. Ain't no way. Okay. Bye, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. This game is so good.